NBC Sports welcomes you live to the EA Sports 500 for the NASCAR Winston Cup Series. Racing at Talladega is like a crowded rush hour traffic jam at warp speed. But here a driver must balance desire with discipline because in this race, there is no such thing as a small mistake. Welcome back to Talladega. You've met the stars, you've heard the stories. Now let's see if you can hold your breath for 188 laps. Here are the three guys to call it for you, Alan, Wally, and Benny. Okay, Bill, thanks. Let's start with the championship. Rusty Wallace says, BP, this is a pivotal race for staying in contention for the title. Seven races to go. Just seven racers remain in this championship, Chase. Out of the seven, this is the race that has most of the teams concerned because things happen here you just simply cannot control. A prime example was your last fall. On the last lap, two cars get together. When they get together, they spin in front of the field. Before it's over, about 12, 14 cars become victims. You see, all these cars run about the same speed, around 190 miles per hour. They're all in one group, so when something happens, it's so difficult not to be a victim. And NASCAR's came up with a great idea to help get these guys away from these big 40 car packs. And that's what the fuel cell, the small, smaller fuel cell, what that means is they're going to have to come in more often, which puts a premium on not only the pit crews, but the guys getting in and out of the pits. Coming off of turn four, they're screaming down there, 185 mile an hour, don't lock your brakes up. Because if you do, you're going to have to change tires instead of just taking fuel. So it's going to be real important today on not only the drivers, but the pit crews. Did I, did I hear him right? He said NASCAR had a great idea. I know that's a shock coming from me, <laughs> but I do agree with this one. All right, be interesting to see what the championship standings look like at the end of the day today. Right now, down below us at the start-finish line, the final pre-race opening ceremony is about to begin. Let's join it. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please rise and remove your hats as the Alabama Army National Guard from the 2025th in Jacksonville, Alabama, presents today's colors. The flag raising by Boy Scout Troop 199 out of Pell City, Alabama. Please welcome Eric Quinn from Motor Racing Outreach as he delivers today's invocation. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we want to say thank you today. Thank you for the beautiful weather we have in this awesome facility. We thank you most of all for your son, Jesus Christ. We ask, Lord, that you would have safety over these drivers and crews today. Just watch over them, be with their families as they wait anxiously for them. Be with the safety crews and the officials as they watch over the competitors. I ask, Lord, for the fans that you would give them a great day, Keep, get them home safely so that they might share their experiences when they get home with their family. And we ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Please welcome Sony recording artists, Little Big Town, as they sing our national anthem. Say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the red. Flying Squadron 
from Columbus, Mississippi, led by Captain Mark Sadler. in NASCAR racing, NFL great and Grand Marshal Ken Stabler. Gentlemen, start your engine. seats at Talladega, most all of them sold, will hardly be used over the next three hours. You're watching NASCAR on NBC. Over the weekend, more than 10,000 fans took part in the EA Sports NASCAR Thunder 2003 Fan Challenge here in Talladega. Derek Wood of Elkhorn, Nebraska, drove the fastest qualifying lap, advancing into the final round against Dale Earnhardt Jr. And even though Junior's won the last two races here at Talladega, Derek got past his NASCAR hero on the final dramatic lap, <laughs> earning him the title of Ultimate NASCAR Thunder Video Gamer and $10,000. All right, what about our NASCAR Thunder 2003, BP? Well, normally at this time of the race, we tell you about the groove and the best way, best way around the racetrack. Today, there is no groove. They're all over the racetrack. We see the cars too wide. You're going through the trial by the start-finish lap. Wallet will probably see more cars wide than that. It's going to get a lot busier. Three, four. Yesterday in practice, we saw the cars three, four wide. These cars at 190 miles per hour can run inside any of these lanes they want to. And that's what it may take to get to victory lane and hoist that trophy. NASCAR Thunder 2003, now available in stores. Cars just rolling from the pit lane to start their three paraded pace laps. A look at the starting lineup and the green flag is next from Talladega. NBC's coverage of the EA Sports 500 is brought to you by NASCAR Thunder 2003 from EA Sports. If it's in the game, it's in the game. By Dodge, you can take life as it comes or you can grab life by the horns. Dodge. By Walmart. Always low prices, always. By Wrangler and Wrangler's new five-star premium denim jeans. And by Coca-Cola, the official soft drink of NASCAR. NASCAR on NBC from the world's fastest speedway where the EA Sports 500 is about to get underway at Talladega. Cars about one and a half laps through three parade and pace laps they'll make before the green waves. Budweiser, the official beer of NASCAR, is proud to sponsor the Bud Pole Award given to the fastest qualifier at each NASCAR Winston Cup race, but not this one. Qualifying canceled by rain on Friday, but there are the 14 drivers already qualified for next February's Bud Shootout, and Heiser Busch awarding more than $7 million since 1979 as title sponsor of NASCAR's Pole Award program. Now the Walmart starting grid for today's EA Sports 500. Field lined up according to current owner points and other provisions. So Jimmy Johnson, the championship leader, is on the pole. And on the inside of row two is Tony Stewart. Restrictor plates his Achilles this year. He's averaged a 37th place finish. Last week's winner, Jeff Gordon, on the outside. Jamie McMurray, his NASCAR Winston Cup debut in Sterling Marlins car. He starts in row three with Rusty Wallace. There's Ryan Newman, the inside of row four. Hottest driver so far in the second half, Matt Kenseth on the outside. Four victories this year. A couple of drivers each making their 52nd start at Talladega. Bill Elliott and Ricky Rudd, the veterans row, row number five today. And on the inside of row six, Kurt Busch on the outside is Dale Jarrett. Let's try to talk to Dale Jarrett. DJ, Benny Parsons, you got me? I got you, BP. All right, first of all, how's the car? I think it was going to be pretty good. Uh, 
seems to be uh, able to draft up and hang on. Uh, haven't had it out front that much uh, in the draft, but I think we'll be okay. Do you have your strategy all lined up with a small gas tank? We talked about a lot of different uh, scenarios for sure. And, uh, wow, well, we got some action going on before we ever get started here. But uh, it's going to be interesting to see how it plays out. We think we know what we want to do if we can just make all of that happen. Yeah, we had a couple of guys get together coming down for the signal. One lap to go, DJ. Yeah, it looked like Mark was trying to warm up his tires and maybe got a little loose and came over into the 48. So uh, I don't know if there's any damage, but we'll have to see what happens. Oh, man, it's, it's starting early, DJ. Good luck. It is starting early. Uh, hopefully that'll be as much action as we'll have today other than just a lot of passing. All right, man, thanks. And the rest of the starting field for today's EA Sports 500. What was that all about? The 48 right front fender when I looked up was pretty well damaged. Oh, man. Did I, I, what do you do about that? I'm monitoring NASCAR's radio. I believe the six team is asking permission to pass the pace car to try and come to pit road and check their car. Permission being denied, of course. You're never allowed to pass the pace car. Hmm. Wow, that's weird. That is weird. And the top two guys in the championship before we even get started. And as I said, there is damage. I saw damage to the right front tire, right front fender. Let's see what we can tell what might have happened. Well, you see Mark on the outside, front row. Left front down so far that the tire hit the fender there, Mark. Oh, uh, that wasn't it, buddy. It was uh, mechanically bound. It was locked. It wasn't a fender. What in the Whoa. world? I have no idea. He's talking like the, the way he's talking to Ben Leslie is all of a sudden it just locked up. He was turning it left and it would not turn back to the right. It just locked up. And Ben is talking about the air pressure being so low. Matt, what are they saying down there? Benny, Chad Canals was lobbying NASCAR that they could bring the 48 down the hold off, throwing the green. They are not, the way it sounds now, they are not going to do that. Chad is still lobbying. He says that his spotter told him that, that there is damage to the right front fender. Chad is still lobbying. And Rick Hendrick is now coming into the mix, helping to lobby on the 48 team's part. And Matt, while that's going on, they're putting Mark Martin's number up on the board. He's being black flagged. Dave, what's up there? It's okay. It's perfect. Still posting us. They're still posting us. We got to come down and raise the hood. All right. Having some troubles with Dave's microphone. We'll get him fixed in a minute. You see Mark Martin following the pace car down pit road as the field comes to the green flag. One championship contender in trouble before we even start. And he, we heard Ben Lester say NASCAR's posted us. We've got to come down and raise the hood. They do that. They do that as the field goes green. 188 laps to make up the distance at Talladega today. Jimmy Johnson and now Jeff Gordon lead the field to turn one. And obviously Jeff took a look at that fender when he pulled up next to Jimmy Johnson. Didn't think it was bad enough for Jimmy Johnson to come down pit lane. And we see Mark Martin is rolling, but he is completely out of the draft. That means he'll be about three seconds a lap slower than these cars. He needs a caution fast to catch up to the field. Here's Kurt. Pit this time, pit this time. I want to change right side tire, pass that fender out. Take the a hammer with you if you've got to. The 48 car, Chad Canals talking about pit this time. It must be rubbing or something. Pit this time, pit this time, three one. Unbelievable. I can't believe that is. That is. Unbelievable. Wow. So the top two in the championship in trouble already. Well, it is pretty bad then. Yes, it is. We yeah. see the damage of that right front fender. Jeff Gordon leads lap one, Rusty Wallace to his outside. They're three deep right behind him. Matt Yoakum. And what will seem like an eternity, Jimmy Johnson finally comes to a stop. You can see the right front cosmetic damage. Shane Parstow going to work, trying to pull out that front valence, beating it with a hammer as they lose more and more time. Chad Canals, the crew chief underneath, trying to beat out the front valence right underneath the Monte Carlo decal, changing right side tires. Jimmy now is finally down and away. A tough break for today's point leader. He's going to lose a lap. Yeah, he's going to go a lap down real quick here. These engines, the restricted engines, take a long time to get up to speed, and this pack is coming at him full steam. Why wouldn't you have come in on the pace lap when they weren't up to speed? You wouldn't have lost as much ground. Well, because Mark Martin was black flag, had to come in, and he's about a half lap behind where Jimmy 
Johnson is going to get past in probably five or six laps. Yes. Not even that long. I mean, he's coming off turn two, and this is yeah, the pack. You're right. So he's going to get overtaken this lap. But see, they were just coming up to speed when Mark came in, so he had a lot more time. What do you say, Matt? Well, Wally, one thing, while under the pace laps, Chad Knauss radioed Jimmy Johnson and said, is it smoking? When they took the green coming out of two, he says, is it smoking? And his radio was breaking up. Chad could not take a chance that possibly it was smoking because it is a great distance from the front stretch to the back stretch. Dave. Matt, Mark Martin radioed in before the problem occurred on the pace lap that he had a steering situation. NASCAR required them to pit because they wanted them to check the steering problem. Apparently that was okay, and when they also checked for any damage on the six car, that too is okay. So Mark Martin is running 42nd on the backstretch. The field's into turn one, coming up on 43rd place, Jimmy Johnson. And this race has gotten bizarre right from the get-go. Like I said, there had to be some kind of re radio communication problem because Jeff Gordon obviously saw that fender on his team, I mean, the car that he part owned, and knew it was going to be a problem. But now, maybe Jimmy did not get the message. Best thing Jimmy could do is try to tag on to Jeff Gordon here, right? He try and stay up there and hope that, you know, somebody gives him a lap back and a caution. Yeah, too late. Because now he's back about 10th spot. So well, at this point, at this point now, I would get out of the draft completely and just right in the back in case something does happen, you're not going to be in it. Try to dodge the wreck. Okay, so while we've been paying attention to what's been going on with the championship leaders, the race lead has changed hands. Jeff Gordon is shuffled back, and Matt Kenseth goes to the point. Matt, one of the five drivers who could win the million-dollar bonus from Winston today. Top five finishers from the Richmond race, second weekend of September. If one of them can win the race today, they get a million-dollar bonus, and a fan gets a million dollars as well. But it sure didn't take Junior and Michael Walter long to get to the front, did it? There they are in second and, well, what's third? Now it's fourth as Rudd goes to the outside in that 28 car. And Junior started 13th. Michael started 15th. They were nose to tail when the green flag dropped. And that's what the competitors have to avoid. They need to get in between that 8 and 15 because everybody knows how strong they've been on the restrictive plate races, so. Watch the yellow line at the bottom of the track. That's the out-of-bounds line here at Talladega. You saw Jeff Gordon flirting with it a minute ago. You saw Jeff Green running down to that yellow line, and Gordon had no choice but back off the throttle. NASCAR told the drivers in their pre-race meeting about two hours before green flag. Race above the yellow line on the track. The uh, quote from race director David Hoots was, if in NASCAR's judgment, you go below the yellow line to improve your position, you will be black flagged and penalized. In fact, our camera had a rock in the lens. Didn't yes, it? sure did. Top five have lined up single file, two and three wide from their back. And the reason a guy will go down a block like Jeff Green did is you don't want to be put in the position to be in the center. Because if a guy comes underneath you and makes that move, all of a sudden you're in the middle and you're going to lose a lot of positions. On board, Ryan Newman. Oh, he had to back out of the throttle. You hear that? He squeezed out as he ran up on the back of Tony Stewart's car. First six, seven cars all in a single line, but more behind that, it is, I think chaos is probably the best one I can think of. Okay, check it out. First to 41st, 3.3 seconds on a track that it takes 50-some seconds to get around. What do you think it'd be normally? Let's say Charlotte next week. How far would it be first to 41st? Oh, 15, 18 seconds. This many laps? It probably will be, yeah, at least half of uh, 30, about 15 seconds. Half a lap. Matt Kenseth leads, Dale Earnhardt Jr. is second, Michael Waltrip third, Jeff Green fourth, Rusty Wallace fifth. Some bizarre moments at the opening here, but the championship leaders Jimmy Johnson and Mark Martin already running last after starting first. Here's our Wendy's race menu as we follow the race for the championship on NBC and TNT next Sunday. Lowe's Motor Speedway Charlotte, 12 noon Eastern time, followed by the final short track race of the season in Martinsville, Virginia. And it's on to Atlanta, Rockingham. It's going to be a great fight for the title. Be with us on NBC and TNT.
Here at Talladega, Matt Kenseth is the leader of the EA Sports 500. Check this out. Jeff Gordon trying to go by Dale Earnhardt Jr. We haven't seen many cars pass that eight on a restrictor plate racetrack. He's got the 20 car behind him of Tony Stewart. Tony was very strong in practice, so he's got a good drafting partner right there. Just joining us, the start of this race already bizarre. The field lined up according to owner points because qualifying was rained out. The top two in the championship, Jimmy Johnson and Mark Martin, are on the front row. And watch Martin as he's weaving back and forth to clean his tires, and all of a sudden the steering locks up. And he drives down right in the side of the right front fender of Jimmy Johnson's car. I, I think he probably felt something was wrong, BP. That's why he was swerving like that. I think he probably felt something back earlier and started swinging it around. Here's Here what... Go ahead. Yeah, here's what they said on the radio. I guess it happened when I tried to warm the tires up, and the steering locked up on some. It might have, it might have shoved the left front down so far that the tire hit the fender there, Mark. And you see Mark about to be swallowed up by the pack as they're coming up to put him a lap down. He's in 42nd place. Jimmy Johnson, who pitted on the first lap of the race, is one lap down in 43rd. Dave. Jack Roush now. Jack, we heard Mark say on the radio that he might have gotten the left, or actually Ben speculated he might have gotten the left front caught up underneath it. Do you have any idea what might have happened? It seemed like a mechanical problem based on uh, looking at the TV, the monitor there, the way it went across the racetrack. I think that there must have been a rock that got up in there and uh, locked up a, uh, the, the steering as he tried to turn it, or uh, there was a wrench or a fastener of some kind that got in the way. Whatever the mechanical problem was, it's cleared itself out now. He doesn't have a problem now, but there was certainly a problem at the beginning. Okay, and right now, Mark has been seeing debris on the racetrack, trying to call it in, but it's not anything that NASCAR will throw the caution for. Matt? Dave, Chad Canal still shaking his head in disbelief. Chad, you've worked on the damage. How bad is it? It's pretty substantial. You know, anytime you get any type of damage in a super speedway car, it just kills the drag on the car. So the car is running well right now in the draft. Will it be fast enough to ever lead again? I don't know. I probably doubt it. You know, I don't know. I hated something apparently happened to the six car. Right now they've got him listed the same lap as us where, you know, he pitted before they took the green. That's supposed to be a one lap penalty and he's still on the same lap as us. So I don't, I don't really understand what's going on, but. You know, it's early on in the race. We'll try to get our lap back. We get our lap back, and we can get up there and get a good solid top ten out of this. Is that why you didn't come as well? Because of the one lap penalty? They told me if I would have pitted before the green flag that I would have gotten a one lap penalty. Talladega. It's the Bermuda Triangle. Wins the Cup stock car racing. And the wild and wacky things happen, and they've done again here today. Now, my understanding, we want to check with NASCAR and, and confirm. My understanding is, I think most everybody, if you stop on the pace lap and fuel the car, yeah, I then it's a lap penalty. But I didn't realize that you could stop. Especially if it, if it becomes an issue where you've got damage to the yeah. car. I don't think they want a car out there that's got damage leading the pack to the green. Yeah, we're, Benny, we're thinking the same thing. That, that, and obviously there's some confusion there somewhere. But if you take fuel before the start, that's a no-no. Yes. But I've never heard it said you can't pit before the start of the race. Because if you could fuel, then all the cars back from 35th on back would stop every time on the one to go and put some fuel in the car just so they could have that extra gasoline. It would be an advantage for them. Especially today. Yeah, because it's going to be, I think fuel is going to be a big issue today. Matt Kenseth leads. Mark Martin now put one lap down. See him running right behind his Roush teammate Kenseth. Out of the 17, Mark in the six. And Dale Earnhardt Jr. now in that outside lane. Trying to flex his muscles, take that Bud Chevrolet to the front. But you notice he's been separated from his uh, identical twin there, the, the 15 car. Well, that's what they're going to have to do. Like I said, these guys know how fast those two cars are when they get hooked up. So they need to keep those guys separated. A couple guys making a charge to the front here. You got Schrader up there and, and uh, Mike Skinner. Those guys started way back in the field. So your cars are working real well right now in the draft. And by the way, just to back up and put the put the button on the Jimmy Johnson thing, just confirm with NASCAR race control, he could have pitted on the pace lap as long as he didn't take fuel and there would have been no penalty. That makes sense. Right. Because I, mean, I know they wouldn't want a car out there that, like I said, it becomes a, a safety issue and that car had a lot of damage. And where Mark Martin is concerned, NASCAR asked him to pit because they didn't want to have a car out there starting the race that had a steering problem. Right. Marty? 
Well, believe it or not, in Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s car, as you ride looking out his bumper right now, they debated on changing the engine in this car this morning. Yesterday in half the hour, Dale Jr. said he felt like the engine was starting to lay down. The engine that won the last two races here is the backup engine. It's on the truck. They debated on the, whether to put it in or not. They decided not to do that. They felt like this was their best power plant as he continues to try to get front to the front. He's trying that outside groove and doing it with Tony Stewart pushing him. You know, sometimes BP on the dyno and on the racetrack are two different things. Looks to me like he's picking them up and putting them down pretty good right now. Talking about the engine in the eight car. He led the last lap, as a matter of fact. Is that the first time he's led today? Yep, first lap Junior's led today. Jeff Gordon led three, Matt Kenseth 14, and now Junior for one. Here's our old Navy race fact. Eight drivers won their first NASCAR Winston Cup race at Talladega. Only two ever picked up a second career win. Davey Allison, Ken Schrader. You know one of the guys that got his first and only career Winston Cup win here? That I do, my brother Phil. Yep. Matt Kenseth, Dale Earnhardt Jr. racing for the lead just underway in the EA Sports 500 at Talladega. You're watching NASCAR on NBC. NASCAR on NBC from Talladega, Alabama, with live coverage of the EA Sports 500 for the NASCAR Winston Cup Series. Our little Debbie trivia question, who is the last driver to win Talladega and with the win take over the championship lead? Survey says, You're I didn't even know this one. I had to look at the back of the card to get the answer. Jeff Gordon in July of 1996. Yes, this race used to be run the last weekend in July, and we we'll be talking about it being hot today. Yeah, it was hot then. <laughs> I guarantee you, I don't know what the temperature was, but it was hot. Jeremy Mayfield in the middle of that, in the 19 car, and Wally, I can't believe the line here in the uh, online poll. This is one. Read this out. Folks, pay attention to this now. Our NBC.com, NBCSports.com poll. This is a Benny and Wally special. Would you like to see a red flag rule used at Talladega and Daytona that could set up a potential one-lap sprint for the win? Background on this, the red flag last week at Kansas and some of the other tracks, the not red flag at Daytona, which would have resulted in a one-lap race to the finish the drivers very much against that on these restricted tracks at Daytona and Talladega and we had some on-air debate about whether the fans would be in favor of it or not so that's true let's tell us let the fans just tell us what you think plus we've talked about so, so much about the pit road and what's going to happen today if you want to look at a pit map for today's race and find out where your favorite drivers stop and we've got that up at NBCSports.com too well, I can't believe the line that Junior he took the lead on the outside. When he got in front, I thought he would drive back down to the very bottom of the racetrack, but he's staying on the very top. I have never seen him run around this racetrack in that high line. Yeah, obviously he's got the car uh, the cars handling well because he couldn't run up there if it wasn't handling well. He's got a lot of the other guys that are hanging with him too, so working for him. You see that bump out of turn four is what's tough to run that high line. When you come out of four, there's a pretty good bump, but must not be affecting him much monitoring on Dale Jr.'s radio when he took the lead a couple of laps ago. Yeah, the top is where it's at. Snyder. Well, BP, let me explain a little bit. About two months ago, Dale Earnhardt Jr. had a friend give him about 200 beta tapes. Those are pretty high quality videotapes of old races. He bought a beta machine, put it in his house, and he's been watching these old races. He said, I'm running the top line like these old guys, like BP used to do. This is fun up here. It's a little scary, but I like it up here. <laughs> I don't know about that. Man, oh, man, I've never seen him that high on this racetrack. Difference was when you did it, you didn't have a restrictor plate. Yeah. I was chasing that back end up there. You know, Junior had a pretty good teacher for this racetrack, too, not just those old video games, but his dad who won here 10 times. I've had the same opportunity everybody else has as far as learning from him. A lot of these guys race against him for a long time and know quite a bit about his style and probably uh, picked up on a lot of things that he did. But uh, I take in a lot of confidence, I guess, of, uh, you know, being kin to him that I had the ability to 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 carry that out on the racetrack and it just seems to uh, have an effect on the rest of the field. I don't know, but just a lot of guys seem to want to work with me. Uh, and when you get a lot of help out there, it really makes you look good. Well, he's getting a lot of help right now from Tony Stewart, but I'm not too sure that's enough because Jeremy Mayfield is taking that dodge up to the middle and just might take the lead. Sure looks like it. 
like everybody's got a lot of help. Yeah. I mean, they're three, three wide, and I don't know how deep they are. You got some guys in there that have come from the back of the pack. The gold car on the inside, Mike Skinner in the four. He started 37th. Yellow car, the M&M's machine on the left, Ken Schrader, 36. He started back in 31st place. And Bill, that rookie, Jamie McMurray, he got shuffled back for a little bit, but now he's moving back toward the front. Been running inside the top 10 for the last few laps, and we're doing an outstanding job in the car, not saying much on the radio, but getting fantastic help from his two spotters, Lauren Rainier and Timmy McKeekin. McKeekin's on the back stretch. Lauren is on the front stretch. He's their number one spotter, the guy that usually spots for Sterling Marlin as well. So not only is he getting to know the crew and the other drivers, he's also learning two new spotters today at Talladega. And you can tell, you can see just how important spotters would be to tell you, to warn you that a car is trying to pass you on the inside, that a car is trying to pass you on the outside. Look at Brett Bodine, that Hooters car right behind the Sitco Jeff Burton car. Started 41st. Last time by, he was 12th and might be farther up this time. And by the way, watching that 40 car on pit road, Sterling Marlin was part of the Discover Card countdown to green. Said it's very tough to stand here and watch. It can be difficult to race these events, but if you're a Winston Cup driver, the last place you want to be is on the sidelines. That's where Sterling is today, again, out for the season with a fat fractured vertebra in his neck. Yeah, especially in a place like here, Bill, because, I mean, Sterling is one of the best guys in the draft. He's had a lot of success here, and boy, he had a good shot of winning this race. And, you know, we saw Sterling Marlin standing in the pits with the cervical collar on. And why did he get out of the car? He cracked the cervical number two, C2 or whatever. Folks, that's the same. C2 is the same thing Christopher Reed broke. Now, that I understand. So, and he cracked this one. So there's no wonder why he's standing there and not in the, in the great car. Might have had a great chance to win the championship this year. But in the end, it's not worth it. Oh, I agree. Walking, hey, walking's a lot better. Yeah. Hey, how about Jimmy Johnson? 48 car has gotten in front of the pack. He's on the tail end of the lead lap. Caution comes out now, and he can stay there back around to the yellow flag. He's right back in the thick of this thing. Hardest thing at Talladega or Daytona, these restricted races, is getting a lap back if you get one down. Although his, his teammates team going to swallow him up. Yeah, <laughs> team, team owner said, uh, uh You're one of these guys that got to beat here. All right, well, that's interesting, isn't it? And we talked about the big crash and, and how difficult it is to avoid the big crash. I think now, if you haven't watched the race at Talladega before, you understand just how tough it would be if something happens up in front of these cars and they make contact and start spinning. These guys in the back have no chance. You know, I watch these races all the time, and the phrase keeps popping into my head. Where'd he come from? Where'd he come from? Weren't we just talking about Ricky Craven dropping back? He just took the lead. 32 car, yeah, about 15th or 16th, just a couple of laps ago. Bill? And the uh, tension and the preparations building here on Pit Road, Allen already closing in on the first set of stops. Remember, these teams are running a fuel cell today that holds about 13 gallons of fuel. It depends on who you ask how much fuel they actually got in there. But when they come in, you'll see all kinds of different strategies, probably two tires, and get as much fuel as you can in there. A lot of pressure on these guys on pit road today. I, you're going to see a lot of chaos getting to pit lane as well, Bill, because these guys are really going to be trying to get as much advantage as they can to get to the start of pit lane. And these cars just don't stop that well, BP. No. 3,400 pounds and very little brake on these cars. Not enough brake. Dave Burns, what are they saying down there? Well, in BP, we've been talking about running the high line here, but several crews have radioed to their drivers, start working your way to the bottom because they don't want to surprise anybody and try to come from a high lane, cut across to go to the pits. That's a big concern if these guys try to push it the rest of the way and run out of fuel in front of the pack. What a mess that's going to be. And I think I'd want to come in if I was the leader or up towards the start of the front of the pack. This way you've got a clean pit lane and, a, you know, you can get in and out without any problems. How about a Bill? Here he comes. And this will be the beginning of it. So far, I only see Craven on pit road. Oh, now he's got other help, other drafting partners coming in. These guys have to pit in bunches. This is going to be fuel only for Craven. Some guys stopping earlier. One, so they'll get a good gas mileage measurement. And the other thing is, they don't want to be on pit road when it's really crowded. Craven's got his fuel. Dave, 
Bill Jeremy Mayfield, who has been at the front of the pack today, changes two right side tires, gets his car full of fuel, no adjustments to the Dodge. Boy, what were Craven's guys yelling about that? I don't know. And Bale Elliott's service already completed right side tires and they've filled it full of fuel. The question, 13 or more, the Dodge is not getting the fuel mileage the Chevrolets and Fords are. Boy, that's going to be a big concern unless this caution flank mixes things up. All right, got some more dropping off to come to pit road as Jeff Gordon comes back with the lead. Here's Jeff Burton, the Sitco car on pit road. Jamie McMurray, Bill. And this is his first pit stop as a Winston Cup driver. Going to change right side tires. Again, it's probably just one can of fuel, although some guys to really pack it are going to use a second can. Not necessary this time. McMurray practiced pit stops yesterday, stalls it, has to get pushed down. First oh, mistake man. for the rookie. Man, oh, man. That's about two or three seconds. He just simply cannot afford to lose on pit road. That's a mistake we talked about earlier. You cannot make on this deal, because if this does go green, that's a lot of space. You're going to have to, it's going to be almost impossible to make up. You see Todd Bodine and Jimmy Spencer also leaving pit road, having just stopped. Who comes in this time? While we watch these pit stops, the ticker across the top of the screen, the names you see now appearing in yellow will be those who have already made their stops in the cycle of green. Here's Matt Kenseth And it's right side tires for Matt and a load of fuel. A lot of concern for spotters and crew chiefs that their drivers can get from the outside groove onto pit road. Kenseth made it. He's got his fuel. He's on his way. Six car, Mark Martin, one lap down, full of fuel, right side tires back out. Martin coming up on Matt Kenseth. There's Kurt Busch leaving pit road. Scott Wimmer's been in. Kevin Harvick. How about Kurt Busch, Marty? Well, it was two tires and no changes for Kurt Busch. Pretty happy with the chassis. They decided to make no chassis changes on the car. And uh, they have a car out of gas on the backstretch. Mike Skinner has run out of gas. Meantime, most of the guys who were front runners are coming in. Gordon is in. Wallace, Stewart, Newman. Dave? Jeff Gordon radioed in. We don't need to change a thing. The car is great. They will put two fresh right side tires on there and pack this fuel cell full of fuel. 12 and a half, 13 gallons, maybe a little bit more, and they'll send Jeff on his way. Matt? The most important guy on the 20s pit stop is Jeff Gooch Patterson, the gas man. He's got to pack that fuel cell full of fuel. Stewart service complete. Did you hear Jeff Gordon revving the engine in anticipation of letting that clutch out and leaving the pits? Touchy still got to be careful. You put right side tires on that thing. You got the hot sticky ones on the left, the cold ones on the right. And we used to break a lot of axles in the back. Boy, that just took Skinner out of the race. Let's just think this yellow. Elliot Sadler stalled on pit road. Had to be pushed several pit stalls down pit road. Here comes Junior down pit road. Junior Michael Waltrip getting a couple of more laps than everybody else. Make a note of that. I'll see if Junior changed his right size. He did lock it up getting down in a pit lane. You're going to see him come by Dave Blaney's car being pushed there. Marty. Michael Waltrip comes on to pit road. He is very happy with the chassis. Dale Earnhardt Jr. at the very last stall on pit road. Take, doesn't take very long to get all the fuel in this 13 gallon fuel cell. It'll be right side tires for Junior. He was a little tight. They decide to make no changes. He is full of fuel. He'll beat this teammate off pit road. Not so fast there. Michael Walter beats Jr. Ricky Rudd also gets by Dale Earnhardt Jr. And now they've got to blend in with the pack that's coming up on him there behind the start finish line. I talked to Richie Gilmore, the head engine man for Dale Earnhardt Incorporated that owns the eight car, the 15 car. And he said that's what they've been working on since Daytona. Fuel mileage. Since they announced a small gas tank, they've been working very hard trying to get more fuel mileage with this restrictor plate engine. Jimmy Johnson and Gordon just blew by those guys. That just came off pit road. Yeah. Yeah. Now, the theory of the smaller fuel cells and the reduced gas tank capacity was to create more green flag pit stops, which break apart the field some and perhaps eliminate the chance of the big wreck. We've just had the first green flag pit stop. What do you think? Well, right now, the cars are thinned out exactly the way NASCAR drew it up on the drawing board. See, we don't have that big pack of cars. We have come some cars to a blast, but we don't have three or four wide. I think right now it's working perfectly. As I say, they go three wide and turn one. <laughs> but I don't know if they're
were stretched out enough to stay that way. I think they're still close enough where well, they may accordion and get right back together again in that big pack. We'll see. Just completed the first 100 miles of the EA Sports 500. The first set of pit stops have been cycled through, and Jeff Gordon has the race lead. Maybe not for long. Here comes Michael Waltrip to his outside. Jimmy Johnson tried to find a way to stay up there on the tail end of the lead lap, but he couldn't put the block on Mike. All right, let's check out the course pit summary. Oh, Ricky Craven out 17th. And we heard all those guys yelling and screaming. They had some kind of problem in Craven's pit that cost him 16 spots. But the pack is drawing back together, and he's right in the middle of it, so he's still right in contention. Didn't hurt him nearly as bad as it would on another track like, say, Charlotte next week. NASCAR on NBC is coming to you from Sweet Home, Alabama. The EA Sports 500 just passed 100 miles in Talladega, Alabama, and pretty fraught with tension right now. Man, it didn't take long. After the pit stops, these cars were strung out. Single file, just double file, and now we're back just a few laps later, that big group of cars again. Bill, we talked about Ricky Craven losing some spots in that pit stop, and we heard kind of a lot of hollering and yelling while you were covering the stop. What's the what's the postmortem there? Well, what they were yelling about was to make sure they got tape off the front of the grill. Craven in traffic was running a water temperature of 250. He would back out of traffic, get off the bumper of somebody to get some air into the front of that car, get it down to about 230. So when he pitted, they wanted to take tape off the grill. They were just shouting instructions to remind the crew man to grab the tape off the front of the grill. They had plenty of time to do that because they had to get a, you know, a full load of 13 gallons of fuel in there. The reason they lost all those spots basically is because they don't have a partner. They don't have a team car and really didn't have a plan for anybody else to draft off of pit road with. So that hurt them getting back up to speed. That's right. He did stop by himself, didn't he? And he stopped the lapper so early in the most cars. So when he's on the racetrack, good point. He was on the racetrack without any drafting help, which is about a second or two. Let's follow up on Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s pit stop of a minute ago. Wally, you talked about how important it is not to slide the front tires if you're only changing two. Yeah, watch watch here. See, him locking that right front tire up is, is bad because that'll flat spot the tire and it'll put it out of balance. And we caught this on Jr.'s radio when he came in for the stop. What tires did I slide on pit road? Right front. Stay below the, the yellow line. Stay below the yellow line. You sure? Just the right front, not the left front. That's four, DJ. Your left front never locked up, buddy. There you and, go. And obviously, that's a concern for him, and it's, it's hard to tell sometimes. You know it's the front, but it's good that he caught it that early. What, what are they saying down there, Dave? Well, here's the problem. This is the right front tire off of Joe Nemechek's car. When they took it off, air pouring out of here, but he got this flat spot when he put the brakes on coming onto pit road. But the problem is you lock up both front tires. And so they replaced the right side tires on that car. The left sides, who knows what that left front looks like. And Joe has reported a vibration in the front of the car. Well, exactly what you were talking about. Exactly your whole point. Man. Yeah, that, that can cost you right there. And it's just, and, and looking at the cars, there's a lot of guys that are running different size rotors. There's, there's the speedway rotors, which are the real narrow rotors, and then some intermediate track rotors, which are thicker rotors. And it, everybody's trying a little bit different deal to try to not lock those brakes up when they come down. And you see Nemechek there, he's in 37th place, and he's the last car in the lead draft. It, if you feel a vibration, you think you've locked up a tire, BP, that doesn't get any better, and that it wears on your mind. It only gets worse, and that's one reason he probably, that Nemechek in that 25 car fell to the back of the line because you certainly don't want to have a tire problem in front of these cars. And here we are again, three wide. All the way back. Harvick up there now. See Michael Waltrip and Dale Earnhardt Jr. got back together after their pit stops. They're drafting. Here are the championship standings as they run now, of course, <laughs> this is going to change lap after lap all day. It's going to change after this lap, <laughs> but the most big, likely. The big deal is the fact that Mark Martin and Jimmy Johnson had their problems on the pace laps and their way back in the field. 
now if you're not familiar with how the championship system works the winner of the race gets 175 points and they go backwards five points for a little ways then it's four points per position and so on so the second place gets 170 points third place 165 and so on then if you lead a lap you get five bonus points if you lead the most laps you get another five bonus points what you don't want is a 43rd because that only pays 34 points and it's possible for some guy to get 185. How, how did somebody like Alan even get to explain that? Mr. Mathematician over here. Well, so they wrote it on the screen. No, that's it. It, it, was they wrote it. it was my lucky day. Kevin Harvey goes to the front and Kurt Busch just drives down on the inside of Gordon takes over second spot. Here's our online poll from the pre-race show. Which track will have the biggest impact on the 2002 NASCAR Winston Cup Championship? You agree with the drivers. I agree, yeah. I agree with the majority as well. Phoenix just 3%. Yeah. We'll be out and see if they're right or wrong. So far, got the first two guys in points that are, yeah. Having some trouble. Jimmy Johnson running 40th, Mark Martin 42nd right now. There's Ryan Newman. Eighth last time across the start finish line. That's one thing about the races here. You can never say for sure where he's running, except last time at the start finish line. In the area of. Yeah. Kevin Harvick is the eighth different driver to lead the EA Sports 500 at Talladega. You're watching NASCAR on NBC. Hey, baby. The EA Sports 500 from Talladega, Alabama, live on NBC. 52 laps complete, just about 150 miles in. Here's our NASCAR Bush Series update. No race this weekend for the Bush cars. Their tight fight for the championship will go on to Charlotte this coming Saturday. Coverage on TNT. NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series update. Just four races left there. Mike Bliss trying to hold off Rick Crawford for their championship. And that, both of them, along with the Winston Cup title, will go right down to Homestead, Florida in mid-November. And the triple header championship weekend there. Already coming up on another round of pit stops. And Ricky Craven, we showed you that he had fallen back to what, 17th, I think it, the graphic said. Last time by, Craven was in 11th spot. There he is, working his way forward. And Michael and Jr. have gotten back together. Kurt Busch is the leader. Jeff Burton is second. Todd Bodine third. Michael Waltrip heading the outside charge, racing him there. On board with Dale Earnhardt Jr., the Bud car. Let's check our telemetry, and you'll see that the mile per hour RPM pretty steady all the way around the racetrack. 189, 90. As he drops off down in the corner, sometimes it will go up a little bit. Wow! Wow, did you see that slide job to Kurt Busch? What was that all about? Did you see that? <laughs> Slide job at Talladega. Looked like he got an oil or something. He came up the racetrack so quickly. Michael Waltrip to second, three deep for third. Ron Hornaday is in that 55 car in the center there. He's in the uh, substitutes role for Bobby Hamilton this week. Marty, Junior still having fun? Oh, yeah, he's having a big time, VP. The one thing you could not see on his telemetry was the water temperature. It was up to 240 a little while ago. So you notice he dropped back from his teammate, Michael Walker. It dropped to 220, and then he started racing again. Now they're up front in a three-car uh, three pack, three-car breakaway, I believe it is. And the 15 and the 8 together again. Hornaday, a terrific run going in that 55 car. His first ride. Remember, in the 55. Remember Bobby Hamilton won here in that car. What was it, a uh, year and a half ago? That car also starred in, when I was talking about things that happened, because on the last lap, last year, the 55 and the 18 made contact. And 
about 14 other cars involved. And folks, no, this is not hard work physically, what these drivers are doing today, because this racetrack really is easy to drive. But mentally what they're going through is about as tough as it gets. Yeah, there's no question about it. The only thing maybe physically BP would be the heat. It is pretty warm out there today, so the inside of the cars are a little bit hot, but yeah, you are, your brain hurts after this race. You're concentrating so much. Jeff Burton with the inside move on Dale Jr. for third. And his brother Ward coming up behind him in the 22 car. I think Kurt Busch moved down to try to give some help to Jeff Burton. He might have moved down and cost himself the lead. Yeah, when you know you're looking, you're looking in the mirror to see who's coming. And if you see somebody coming, you try to move up the racetrack in front of them and hoping that they'll push you a little bit. So you're looking through the mirror a lot. See Dale Jarrett inside the UPS car. Well, as BP was saying, He's... you know, you're, you've got a lot of room, a lot of area to just rest here. You've got a lot of straightaway. So, like he says, physically it's not so bad. It's just that you've got no air, not a whole lot of air coming inside that car to cool you off because these cars are built to go through the air aerodynamically the air goes by these windows and, and nothing really comes inside the car. So a lot of heat inside of these race cars. When you get in really heavy rush hour traffic around the city, you tend to grip the steering wheel a little bit tighter. What about here? You grip the wheel a little bit tighter than you might at another track? I think so. Jeff Burton and the Burton brothers, Ward Burton at 22, going to the front. At 22 car, a new crew chief this week, Frankie Stoddard, who was the crew chief of the 99 car when the season started. Yeah, what an interesting dynamic that is, huh? We got somebody scrape the wall here. Ooh. Wow, that was What close. is that all about? Well, like I said, you're looking in the mirror for a guy that's coming up on you. And if you see a car coming up on you, you want you drive up the racetrack and, and to get a push. Except there wasn't any room to drive up in front of Michael on that one. Let's see if there's any damage on the fenders uh, to either of those cars. They got together pretty good. Fenders are your friends here at Talladega. And Michael probably got the worst of it because the rear fenders aren't as important as the front ones. Well, he's just a couple of laps away from another green flag pit stop that they might be able to try and do something about it. So let's take a break, and we'll come back in time for the stops. Jeff Burton leads ninth different driver out in front of the EA Sports 500. You're watching NASCAR on NBC. Still under green in the EA Sports 500. Jeff Burton continues to lead, and we are closing in on the second round of pit stops. As for that first round of stops, Rusty Wallace came in on lap 35 and basically was out of fuel. They refueled him, gave him right side tires, and sent him back out. Car hasn't been quite as good done this run as it was on the earlier run. Rusty, by taking two tires, be interesting to see if he takes any tires when he stops this time, probably will take lefts because that time can be used while they're fueling the car. Let's move further down pit road to Dave Burns. And Ward Burton took on right side tires on his first stop. He's very happy with this car, not the car that won the Daytona 500. Of course, they take that away from you and put it in the Daytona USA attraction for a year. This is actually a backup car to the one that ran here in April. And he likes it. He's going to keep running it. Marty? Dave, Michael Waltrip team is a little bit concerned about the left front fender. Michael asked his crew chief slugger Labby, take a look at it with binoculars. He said it looks fine, so not too much too worried about it. Left front fender for Michael Waltrip, a little bit of concern. This race is quickly turning into a fuel mileage race. The longer it goes green, the more story the fuel mileage becomes. Many teams can last until lap 72. Michael Waltrip's team might be able to stay out even longer than that. Matt? Already the point leader, Jimmy Johnson, runs back in the 40th position, although he's up in about the 6th to 12th place on the racetrack, trying to stay close to the front. So if we get a debris caution or a caution for the big one, he can try to get his lap back. His car says it's not, he says his car is not that bad, Bill. He's just trying to stay up to the front. 
And once again, Ricky Craven leads the parade on pit road. Again, the second round of stops under green. Not expecting any chassis adjustments here. Two right side tires packing that fuel cell, which is with as much gas as they can get in it. About 13 gallons, 13 and a half, maybe more. He's on his way. Bill Elliotson, a two-time Talladega winner. They made an air pressure adjustment on his first stop because the car was a little bit tight. He says it feels like it just quit turning. Service complete on Elliott. Dave. The 33 of Kenny Wallace was very, very tight. They made, made a wedge adjustment to try to fix that, put on two right side tires, and then he stalled it trying to leave pit lane a lengthy pit stop. Jeremy Mayfield, Ron Hornaday, Casey Atwood also in that lap. No takers this time. Everybody comes past pit road. Well, I tell you what, if this thing goes green all the way, they become the fuel mileage race. Those cars that just pitted, cross them off. They're in trouble. Robbie Gordon up to third spot right now. And we're gonna take second. Kurt Busch riding the rim. How about that? Got some good cars behind him. But, like I said earlier, you're gonna wanna start getting down to that bottom groove because guys are gonna start pitting. And boy, you don't wanna be on the high groove if you need to get in the pits. And this is where a lot of people were uncomfortable expecting the potential for trouble with guys starting to shuffle toward pit road in bunches. Yeah, a lot of hand motion here on waving to the guys behind you, letting them know that you're gonna come in and pit. Give me a little bit of room, because I'm gonna be slowing down. Kenny Wallace, back on pit road. Trying to get down to that 55 mile per hour speed limit on pit road. On the racetrack, the war rages on. Bill. Ken Trader on pit road getting left side tires and fuel. He had complained about a vibration right after his first pit stop. No problem since then though. Apparently it went away. He's on his way. We go to Dave. Left side tires now for Joe Nemechek. Remember he had reported that there was that vibration that he might have had from skidding the tires coming in. And I'm going to take a look real quick on the left front just to see. And he did not. So there was some sort of vibration, but it wasn't a huge flat spot like he had on the right front. Ken Schrader, Jimmy Spencer, Terry Labonte, Johnny Benson, and Joe Nemechek, those who stopped this time. And now Jeff Burton is out of line and coming to pit road. Four or five others following him in. Bill? And they told Jeff Burton that he had a parade of cars behind him, including the 40 car, which is pitted directly behind him. Again, that's the rookie, Jamie McMurray. For Jeff Burton, it is left side tires and fuel. The fuel going in, the tires going on. McMurray gets a fresh windshield, gets a track bar adjustment, right side tires and fuel, spins the tires, and takes off down pit road. Burton had a faster stop. And, and Burton got in pit lane excellent. He got in there really hard, did not lock the front tires up, especially the right front. That's a good thing, BP, because they changed the left zone. And Jamie McMurray at that time did not stall the engine as he did the first time. Matt Kenseth, Scott Wimmer, and Brett Bodine following McMurray and Burton off the pit lane. Looking back, who's going to come in this time? Most of the leaders stay out once more. It's Todd Bodine and Dave Blaney coming in. And Dave Burns is going to cover the Todd Bodine stop. If Todd Bodine can end up the leader at the end of the day, Gertrude Smith from Schmidt from Wooddale, Illinois, will win a million dollars on the Noble 5 Challenge. She's 80 years old, guys. I think she still knows how to cheer. And she's hoping that these two right side tires will help Todd Bodine. Matt? Dave on his last stop, the 77 team gave Dave Blaney the right side tires. This time around, lefts. Here's Robbie Gordon looking for the lead on Kurt Busch and Dale Earnhardt Jr. pushing up through. Two of these cars are riding on board with Ryan Newman. He's also racing for a million dollars and a million dollars for a fan. So is Dale Earnhardt Jr. Got about eight cars breaking off the pit road, Bill. Rusty Wattis leads this parade. Mark Martin follows him along with the 22 and the 14 and the 43. Left side tires for Rusty this time and fuel going in. Did not run out of fuel on this run. Wallace waiting on the fuel, waiting, and we go to Dave. Ward Burton still happy with his car. Right side tires again for Ward Burton. They took on right sides last time. They repeat the process. I see, I see that time that the signal for Ward Burton to go was letting the jack down. Normally, that is a signal for the driver to go. When the jack goes down, you go. But I noticed with all these guys just changing two tires, they're letting the car down and telling the driver verbally when to leave, when the gas tank is full. 
Most of the leaders stay out again, except the leader. Kurt Busch is in at lap 70. A couple others following him in. Marty? He ran out front for most of that segment, Alan. He is very happy with the chassis of the car right now. Many teams are considering taking left side tires. Kurt's team considered that this time, but they will go with right side tires this time. Slides him just a little bit as he comes down pit road, getting pretty good fuel mileage, better than most of his teammates, Matt. Marty, the 29, and Kevin Harvick, they're going to take right side tires on this stop. Service complete. He's full of fuel. He's down and away. Jerry Nadeau and Kevin Harvick leaving behind Kurt Busch. And Dale Earnhardt Jr. is the leader of the race. Jeff Gordon running second. Watching them come off turn four. Is this the lap they stop? Nope. Not yet. Robbie Gordon and Dale Jarrett look like they're ducking in. Yep. Every lap, Jr. and Gordon can stretch that fuel. That could be big. It, I mean, this is turning into be a real fuel race. Marty? Dale Jarrett comes down pit road. Robbie Gordon right in front of him. Robbie having a great run. Dale Jarrett pretty happy with the chassis. Just a little bit tight for DJ. The disappointing finish at Kansas last week, 39th. They want to rebound from that. It'll be right side tires and an air pressure adjustment for the 88 bunch. Junior stopped at lap 35, so he's been 37 laps now. Robbie Gordon lost a little time there, overshot the front of his pit. And he had to push his car back in the pit box before they could do anything to the car. All right, who's coming in? Looks like Gordon's coming in this time. Ryan Newman, Bobby Labonte, Tony Stewart, Dale Jr. stays out. Man, they're getting some fuel mileage in that eight car today. All right, Dave. Jeff just radioed in. It's still running. It's still running. So they were close on fuel. Robbie, Robbie Lewis also reminded him, go slow on pit road. Jeff, one of the best at getting off and on pit road, but he doesn't want to. Oh, now it stalls. The car stalls. They spray ether, try to get it in the cowling, and they're still spraying. He refires. He's gone. Matt? They are still trying to pack that fuel cell full of fuel, Dave. Tony Stewart, left side tires. He eased in to take care of those tires. Marty. Quick stop for the 12 bunch, Matt. It was right side tires and no adjustments for Ryan Newman, who kept it up in the front of that pack for most of that run. Very happy with his car right now. And it looks like finally that the DEI cars will come down pit road. Heard the report from Marty earlier that the left front fender the crew didn't think was damaged on Michael Waltrip's car from that encounter with Kurt Busch. Let's see as they get a closer look at it now on this pit stop. Marty, here they come. Boy, Alan, I, or guys, I tell you, if this thing turns into a fuel mileage race, this could be big because these cars are going further than anyone else. There is a little bit of left front fender damage for Michael Waltrip. It does uh, bowed in just a bit. You should be able to tell that from the shot. They're going to pull it away. It will be obviously no changes for the car that led most of that segment or ran up front most of that segment. He is very happy with that 15 car. And look at Ricky Rudd and Kyle Petty. They, that 28 car, they got it going today. They do have it going, Betty. They actually changed two right side tires very quickly and then just waited a little bit longer for all of the fuel to get in the fuel cell. I've heard a problem this weekend is getting the fuel to go in all the way because there's not as much fuel to force the air out. That's been a problem they've been trying to fix by shaking the car or just waiting a little bit longer. Wow. Michael Waltrip and Dale Earnhardt Jr. raced off of pit road side by side around one and two as the faster field came up on him. And I thought Jr. was going to get right in the middle of the soup there for a second. Yeah, it looked to me like he was. He was going to be right in the middle of the racetrack when a group of cars run across him. But luckily, his spotter told him just at the last instant to move down. He did. They're able to get by. Marty, Michael Waltrip's team's had a chance to get an up close look at that fender, too. Dallas has Slugger Labby. You got a chance to look at the fender damage up close. What do you think? Yeah, that's normal. Dale Michael always seems to knock the left front fender when we come to these places. He knows something about the area we don't, but uh, trying to make it a fuel mileage race. We're hoping a big one don't happen, and everyone that just pit on lap 74 is good to go and make it on uh, one more stop. So we're hoping that works out for us. Will that damage hurt you, Slugger? No, if it's been running good, you know, we went from the back, backed it up to the front, so it's a normal deal for us. All right, and that damage did make the car just a little bit tighter, but again, they did make no changes on that stop. And Marty, I think he meant two more stops. I don't believe he can run the rest of the way on one more stop. Under 13 laps? No. <laughs> Not going to happen. Does your math agree with that? 
I'm counting gonna, on you, you're, Alan. You're going to stop and pick up the pen and the paper and figure it out. <laughs> All right. Here's the leader, Kurt Busch. Jeff Burton is second. Jerry Nadeau is up to third. 113 laps to go. We're at 200 miles at Talladega, and we're having some fun. The EA Sports 500 from Talladega, Alabama, live on NBC, just past 200 miles in the race, and 35 cars in the lead draft. Among those 35, most of the Coca-Cola racing family. Kevin Harvick, Dale Jarrett, Jeff Burton in the top 10. Michael Waltrip getting shuffled back just a little bit on that last pit stop. Same for Bobby Labonte and Tony Stewart. Kyle Petty still right there in the middle of the pack also. Jerry Nadeau had to come back in for something. Yeah, he had an unscheduled stop for something. He was running up in about the in the top five, easily in the top five, and came off turn four and ducked into the pits. Had to be a loose wheel then if he came back in that quickly after the first pit stop. Good point, good point. Probably the case. But I'll bet we'll follow it up to be sure. These tire changers, they do it fast, but you gotta be sure that the lug nuts are tight. Kurt Busch is the leader. One of 10 different drivers who've been out in front today. Kevin Harvick second, Ward Burton third, Rusty Wallace fourth, and Jamie McMurray, the rookie in Sterling Marlin's car running fifth. He's getting challenged from Dale Jarrett, and they're three wide just a little bit behind him. Ricky Craven, that tight ride on the inside, that 32 car, continuing his great run here this afternoon, but if it does turn out to be a fuel mileage race, once again, he's doomed. Uh, we've got cameras that are mounted low on top of the retaining wall at a couple places around the racetrack we call speed shots. And a number of you have expressed concern that we had a bug on our backstretch speed shot. Well, it wasn't a bug. Watch this. This was lap one. Rock something crack. I, ha I vote you go out and change that, Alan. Me? Yeah, just jump out there and change it. I'm you got sure they won't hit you. You got 51 seconds by the time they come back around. Yeah. Nice to know who my friends are. <laughs> How about Dale Jarrett trying to get it rolling toward the front? Bill, what happened to Nadeau? He thought he had a right side tire going down, so he came down to pit road. He actually had a right front fender rubbing on it. So they came down pit road, took the tires off, pulled the fender out. It wasn't going down, but it, it wasn't down yet, but it was probably going down with that fender rub on it. So had to pull him in, fix it, send him back out. That hurts. He's about to go a lap down. He's in 35th place, and he's just in front of this pack of uh, lead cars. That's what we talked about earlier. One mistake on pit road or whatever, if you have to come in or there's any kind of problem, you're done here, really. That's like Mike Skinner, the four car. We saw him charge from the back up to third or fourth spot and run out of fuel on that first stop. He's a lap down and probably is going to have a struggle to try to get it back. Probably well, can't get it back. Got our Lowe's improvers and snoozers, and we could do this about five times all day, and this thing would shuffle back and forth. You could find yourself starting 30th, running second, then running 40th, then running fifth, then running ninth. It just, that's how it is here at Talladega. Okay, let's go the other way. And yeah, we got to go to the front row because Johnson and Marlin, Mark Martin on the first lap making contact, and both cars had to go to the pits. And Johnson has lost 41 spots so far. Mark Martin, 36. First lap, it was the pace laps. Well, that's for, right. That's yeah. Right. I mean, pace lap. they didn't even get to the green flag. And we had the, the only problem of the day so far. At 65 miles an hour. Yeah. <laughs> Manufacturer's Championship for the NASCAR Winston Cup Series. Pretty tight. Ten wins to nine for Ford over Chevrolet. And Dodge not all that far behind. Rusty Wallace in fourth spot. Looking up at the back of the Kent Dodge, Ward Burton. 38 career races at Talladega for Rusty. Only 11 top 10 finishes. I'll tell you what, points are really tightened up now. Look at that in the top five. And look at where Rusty is. Wow, 20 points out in fifth spot if the race were to end right now. Obviously, Matt, it's not going to do that. What's happening with Elliott Sadler, Matt? Well, Benny, things have gone from bad to worse for Elliott Sadler. Now he's reporting he's got a broken shock. They're just going to have to ride it out. Remember, he finished second back in February at the Daytona 500. They're hoping for more of the same here in the season's final plate race. It's not going to happen today. He's in 41st place right now. Mm, that is too bad. 
uh, easier to tell you the guys that aren't on the lead lap. Kenny Wallace is a lap down, had to make an extra pit stop. Mark Martin, Jimmy Johnson, both laps down. Remember the problems earlier on the pace laps we just talked about? Mike Wallace, Mike Skinner, Dave Blaney all had pit problems that shook them out of the uh, running order related to fuel. And Jay Sauter is off the racetrack and the only one of the 43 starters not currently in the running. Coming up on 250 miles on the halfway point of the EA Sports 500 at Talladega. 33 cars in the lead draft as we come up on halfway in the EA Sports 500 at Talladega. Caution free so far with the headline story of the day, a collision on the pace laps between the front row starters Mark Martin and Jimmy Johnson, the top two in the championship that have them both well back in the field. Martin 37th and Johnson 42nd. Notre Dame football next Saturday, the undefeated Irish on NBC at 2.30 Eastern time, returning from South Bend to take on the University of Pittsburgh Panthers. Five straight wins have the Irish back among college football's elite. They continue their return to glory against Pitt next Saturday at 2.30 Eastern here on NBC. I'll tell you one thing, the fighting Irish struggled that first quarter yesterday against yes, Stanford. They did. But they soon righted the ship. Kurt Busch is the leader. Jeff Gordon is second. Dale Earnhardt Jr. is third. And you see all the way back to Kyle Petty, the 32nd place car, still in the lead draft. While it doesn't look like the small gas tank's done a lot to spread these cars out, <laughs> has it? It really hasn't. Although we have dropped, what, maybe 10 guys due to problems in the pits or getting on or off pit lane out of that pit group. But we still have a big group. Still got 33 cars in that large group. And that's what NASCAR, I think, was trying to get away from. They wanted five or six ten car groups yeah or five or six car groups you know you're talking about hand signals when guys are getting oh here comes jeff gordon for the lead on kurt bush well he got a great push from dale Earnhardt jr and michael Waltrip in the 15 car and just blew by kurt bush jeff gordon winner of three of the last six races on the nascar winston cup circuit fourth in the championship just 109 points behind leader Jimmy Johnson. Watch Robbie Gordon and Dale Earnhardt Jr. here on this replay, guys. Crowded, crowded, crowded. And don't do that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Think he was saying have a nice day? Mm -hmm. Yep. Junior in second. And last lap by Robbie Gordon had been shuffled back to 19th. How about Jeff Gordon, Dave? Alan, I'm not sure how many laps that Jeff Gordon is going to lead because when you lead, you don't get quite as good fuel mileage as if you follow. And Robbie Loomis, his crew chief, radio to him, just save us what you can. We're a little close on fuel today. Remember, they stalled it last time. A lot more fun to lead, though. Yeah, I mean... It really is a lot more fun. You can plan all the strategy of trying to win. But, you know, even if you win, it's boring for 500 miles. And you like to have fun while you're out there. Like Junior a little bit ago when he's riding up high and said, high is where it's at. Mention Ryan Newman there inside of Ricky. Uh, what was that? Jeff Burton he's inside of. I'll make it Ricky Craven. Well, his line isn't going anyplace, so he's not inside of Craven anymore. Ooh, that's tight. All right, they're coming to halfway this time. And Jeff Gordon is the race leader of the EA Sports 500 at Talladega. You're watching NASCAR on NBC. NASCAR on NBC from Talladega, Alabama. And the EA Sports 500 just completed 250 miles, coming up on another round of green flag pit stops and beginning to see some separation now at the head of the pack. Well, so much for that, Alan. <laughs> yeah, here comes Junior. And I tell you what, these last few laps with, with Jeff Gordon in front, I had seen some of the fastest speeds I've seen all day long. Couldn't pull it off. Hey, he's going need some help. I, I, you know Michael's going to go up there and help him here eventually. It would be the smart thing to do. Waltrip in the 15, Earnhardt Jr. in the 8, corporate teammates at Dale Earnhardt Incorporated. And together have dominated the races at Daytona and Talladega in the last two seasons. Now they had a 12, about 12, 14 car line there going to be Pete. If they would have stayed in line, they would have broken away from that second pack. 
but they just can't stand it. They gotta have fun. Gotta have fun. They gotta enjoy themselves. Gotta get out there and race. And but in doing so, as you're right, they let everybody else back in the race. Kevin Harvick three wide. Could have put Michael Waltrip in the box. Michael tried to squeeze into that low line in front of Ward Burton. You know, I talked about dominance of the Daytona Talladega races by Dale Earnhardt Incorporated in the past two seasons. Seven races. They've had four wins, four second place finishes, and a top two sweep in three of those seven. And have led 45% of all the laps run. Bill, 32's in the pits again. And he's about to be on his way, but he did slide to a stop. They only changed left. Scott Fuel, he's gone. Matt. Bill Elliott's in, left side tires. They are probably going to have to make it an extra stop in the competition. They can only go about 32 laps every run. Rodney Rhodes fills it full of fuel. Service complete for Elliott. Yeah, he can run 32 laps, and the DEI cars so far have run 38 laps. When you stop four or five times, you can see that's a pit stop. Jeff Gordon able to hang on to the lead. Earnhardt Jr. now slipped back to racing Kurt Busch for second place. John Andretti up there in the mix. Andretti in seventh. 33 car, Kenny Wallace. Dave? He took on right side tires the first time, guys. Took on no tires, no fresh tires the last time, and he'll take on left side tires this time. Remember last time he got a penalty? It was for leaving the pit box while he was still fueling. He crossed the line. Yeah, that was mentioned in the drivers and crew chiefs meeting this morning that you have to disconnect that fuel can before you cross the front line of that pit. You'll see a lot of these gas men try to run with the car to keep that thing plugged in for as long as possible. I did not realize that was a penalty. I'd have been guilty of that myself. That would be taking equipment out of the pit box, which is a penalty. But again, they were especially warned about that in the driver's meeting this morning. Forty eight car, the championship leader starting the day is in. And he was a lone ranger out there running by himself without anybody to draft with. They're going to make a right side tire change on Jimmy Johnson today. Joe Nemechek to right side tires full of fuel down pit road. Maybe those two Rick Hendrick owned cars can link up together and try and give Johnson a boost. Well, as Nemechek comes down pit road, Terry Labonte, the Kellogg's car is right behind him, so two Hendrick cars, maybe they have a better shot getting hooked up. I'm told that Labonte stalled the car trying to leave the pits. That's why Nemechek was in front of him. How about Jeff Gordon able to hold off Dale Jr.? That hasn't been done at Talladega or Daytona much the last couple of years. Pretty impressive. Whoever got more business on pit road? Yep, a lot of business now. Matt Kenseth is here. He's getting left side tires and fuel. Still waiting on the fuel. Takes a little bit longer to put the fuel in than the tires on. Matt's on his way. Matt going to fly from here in Talladega up to his native Wisconsin and head for the Packers game Monday night. Doesn't get a chance to do that much during racing season. Oh, Jeff Gordon got to slide wide around some of the slower traffic. Kurt Busch. Moving through at the bottom. Wow. Evidently, Gordon had to back completely off the throttle because he's lost one, two, three, four spots. Four car of Mike Skinner is not on the lead lap. Seven car of Casey Atwood is not on the lead lap. That's what happened. They came up on those cars so fast, and they just kind of scattered. And Jack lost a lot of momentum having to get out of the gas there. And he's still getting shuffled back on the outside. So Kurt Busch is the new leader. And we intercepted this on his radio a little while ago about what he's learning while leading this race. We are hauling ass now. I can feel it. Yeah. Before, I mean, I was being a little bully. I told you yesterday I needed to work on when I'm in the lead. I did that today and learned a lot of things. Just pitched the 15. And I will ride for a little bit. Use that knowledge later. That back earlier when he when he uh, pinched Michael Waltrip. I, he's, I guess that's what he's talking about. I wouldn't be bragging about that though. No. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie McMurray, see out of gas. Bill, you run out. 
Yeah, he ran out, and he's concerned because you run out of fuel, your tack doesn't work, so they told him, guess your best on pit road speed, but don't go over it. So you got to be a good guesser, too. <laughs> How do you do that? I don't know, especially when it's your first Winston Cup race. Rusty Wallace pulling out, he got tires. Jeff Burton's on his way, he got tires. Now McMurray's in his pit stall. They spray a fluid into the intake to try and help him get it started. They're going to make a chassis adjustment. Fuel going in, left side tires are on. Still waiting to try and get it started, will not start. Now they're going to have to push it, push it, push it. They got a long way to go here, trying to fire it. No luck, you got to get that thing fired fast because those guys are going to run out of gas like that car did. Yeah, and, that, and there again, there's a guy that out of the pack now. Probably going to lose a lap because of that. And if you're new to NASCAR, there are no speedometers in these machines. They judge their pit road speed limit by the tachometer, the RPMs that they're supposed to run, and that doesn't work when the engine shut off. And Jamie McMurray caught a break. He had an early pit stop. If he'd had to coast all the way down pit road, there's no way in this world he'd ever guess 55 miles per hour. Yeah, you're right. Michael Waltrip is now out in front. Kurt Busch is second. Dale Earnhardt Jr. riding with him here. He's in third. Todd Bodine is fourth, Kevin Harvick is fifth. That's Todd all the way down to the inside, and Harvick you're looking at the bumper of. Well, Skinner got back in front of these guys. We have one of our crew cams, our pit crew camera that's mounted on the helmet of a guy on one of Jamie McMurray's team members during that last we're out of fuel stop. This is the front tire changer, Clay Robinson. Pops it. Well, I don't know, Clay's quick. Uh, push, Clay, push. Oh, nice job. I'll tell you one thing, it's a good thing that Al Schubert, the trainer's got these guys in shape. They push it a lot farther than I thought they could. There's Matt Kenseth in the 17. Don't forget the ticker across the top. The guys that have already stopped will be shown in yellow. And Kenseth was one of the guys who was in just a few laps ago. Here's Ward Burton in, Dave. Ward Burton's going to get a chassis adjustment and left side tires. He had taken rights on the first two stops. He needed to take lefts and get a full can of fuel in there. Mark Martin, John Andretti there. Is that Frankie Stoddard I hear on the radio? Yeah, I heard Frankie yelling something. Go hard, go hard. And Ward rejoins the hunt. The Daytona 500 winner. Championship standings as they are on the track now. Tony Stewart goes to the front. I said at the top of our broadcast, I couldn't wait to see what that looked like at the end of the day. What happened to Rusty? Rusty made a pit stop, no. Wally. Okay. <laughs> All right, so that, was, Rusty. that wasn't really fair to him then. No, it wasn't. Do over. Where is Rusty in the running order? 18th place now. Racing there with uh, Johnny Benson. Oh, he's not racing with Benson. Johnny, Johnny is, uh, where is John? Johnny's in 21st. Well, okay, he is racing with him. Bobby Gordon came in by himself. He was fifth or sixth when he came in. Marty. Yeah. Well, Robbie Gordon, uh, that's, that's all they had on fuel, and it looks like his teammate Kevin Harvick might be out of fuel on the racetrack as well, but Kevin Hamlin said that's as far as we can go on fuel. They couldn't last any longer. Oh, and Harvick is out in the worst possible place, just past pit road. He's down inside turns one and two. Oh, man. We talked about that. Could be our BP. That's not where you want to run out of fuel at Talladega. I mean, he'll be three laps down before this deal's over with. If he makes it. That's if what I was just going to say. This could bring out a caution. Everybody that's on the edge of a pit stop here is going to be really nervous. Yeah. Is that, I'll tell you what, he may not make it. That's a long way. He's got well, over a mile. But if you oh, need yeah. fuel, you got to come in. You, know, you can't take the chance on doing this yourself by hoping you get a caution. So Jeff Gordon is coming in. And Kurt Busch is coming in. A couple of the lead cars. 
Dave Burns. And Jeff Gordon is in. He'll take on left side tires this time because he took on rights two times in a row. They're going to make a chassis adjustment as well for Jeff. Haven't heard any report on what the car is doing. We'll have to check on seeing why he won a chassis adjustment. Big revs. He's out of here. Marty? Kurt Busch's team, Dave, will take on left side tires. He was tight. They uh, thought that would make the car tighter, so they take a half pound out of both left side tires. Del Jarrett in front of him is pretty happy with this chassis. Left side tires for both of these cars as they race off pit road. Man, Gordon winds that thing up, doesn't he, on a pit stop? Sound like that, about 6,000 RPMs when they let the clutch, when they let it down. There's Harvick. Harvick. He's still coasting, but barely. That's the inside of turn four. Well, he's doing 40 miles per hour, but the telltale sign, zero RPM. And it's one lap down, he's gone already. Ryan Newman's in, Marty. As he crawls down pit road, he hears the voice of Roger Penske on the radio. Maybe a big announcement for this team this week at Charlotte. Maybe going to dodge. Two tires for Ryan Newman and a slight air pressure adjustment. Matt. Marty, this should be Tony Stewart's second to last stop. They took on right side tires. No adjustments for the 20 car. Bobby Labonte also in. He made it. He made it. Unfortunately for everybody involved, he made it. And we stay under the green. Leaders about to complete 300 miles here at Talladega. Here comes Junior Michael Walker on the pit road. Steve Park, the other DEI car right behind them. Now they got to get this car not just fueled, they got to get it started. And you know he's there, used every drop of fuel. All right, Marty, how about Junior stop? Yeah, in fact, Michael Waltrip was wiggling the car as he came down pit road. I saw Slugger Labby kind of throw his hands off like he thought it was out of fuel, but it's fine, no changes. They'll get the fuel in. Dale Earnhardt Jr. has a first stall on pit road. Fuel in that car as well. No changes for either of these DEI cars. Michael's going to get the roll on him. 28 car of Ricky Rudd took on left side tires. He waved vigorously for a crew member to hand him something through the window. It was either a cool drink or an ice pack. It's warm today, guys. Oh, don't wreck on the apron, guys. <laughs> yeah, that's... We had that once already today. Okay, that was the pace line. That, that 30 car got good fuel on it. Yes, for Childress. I mean, he stayed out there a long time. And the 29 car ran out of fuel. And the 31 was in before that. Yeah. Now we'll see how many laps it takes for the pack to come completely back together. There's already one big knot of cars just behind where you're watching Jeff Gordon and Ryan Newman. And we'll see if they can catch him down since they've got a little bit more momentum. Here, here comes the cavalry charge off turn four. Now this time it did split the pack up, BP. Yeah, yeah that's exactly what the whole point of this small fuel tank was about was getting these cars split out like that. All right, Matt, what are they saying down the 29 pits? Not much, huh? Well, Benny, they were shocked. They were going to pit with a 97 car, and then when he ran out, they were going to go with four tires since he'd already lost so much track position. Then he decided just to go with less, and Kevin, in fact, told his crew chief, Gil Martin, just take that computer that figures the gas mileage and throw it on the ground, smash it, jump up and down on it. Let's do it by hand from here on out. And I'm sure you cleaned that up quite a bit over what he really said. <laughs> Is Michael just waving when he came through the picture? All right, we'll check the running order. It is Michael Waltrip leading. Dale Earnhardt Jr. second. Kevin Harvick, after his problems, is two laps down in 40th place. Jeff Gordon is third, nine-tenths of a second behind Earnhardt Jr. Talked about their dominance at Daytona and Talladega, the DEI duo. They don't do too bad on these restricted plate racetracks where the NASCAR installs a, an aluminum plate under the carburetor that restricts the horsepower from about 800 down to 450 or so because they just can't let these cars run unrestricted they'd be 230 miles per hour. All right, second group has caught the first. Gordon, Newman, Kurt Busch, Dale Jarrett, right up there with Earnhardt Jr. and Waltrip. And we're just past 300 miles in the EA Sports 500 from Talladega. Michael Waltrip is the leader. You're watching NASCAR on NBC.
Friday night, rookie Jimmy Johnson was among the many drivers and crew who took on Talladega, courtesy of EA Sports NASCAR Thunder 2003. And even when you're playing it, you get a real true sensation of what it's like to be out there on the racetrack. Johnson went up against fellow rookie Ryan Newman, Jeff Gordon, and Kevin Harvick in the EA Sports Drivers Challenge. And in the final, Ryan defeated last year's champion Kevin Harvick and picked up the W. <laughs> Pretty cool. I mean, uh, I won a truck race earlier today out here with the Winston truck, so I'm two for two today. We didn't even get to qualify. Dan, right now, he's in the lead. He's leading the EA Sports 500 in his Ford Taurus. Pretty good weekend right now. Took the lead away from Jeff Gordon just a lap ago. And is now the 11th different driver to be out in front of this race. Is that debris on the racetrack I see on the apron? Yeah, it's down the apron, but way below the yellow line. That's not an issue, is it? No. I mean, that's not any reason to put out the caution. If you drive down there, you're in trouble anyway. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Jeff Gordon for the lead. And the more these guys up front race side by side, that pack that had been broken apart, it's all right back together. Yeah. It's usually in the past these guys will run. They'll get five or six or eight cars in single file and try to break away, but not today. 29 cars in the lead pack. Lead lap cars, plus a couple of others that are lapped down, like Mark Martin and Jimmy Johnson. And that car right there above Jeff Gordon, Jerry Nadeau, just now went a lap down after the unscheduled pit stop. Oh, Robbie Gordon. Trying to hang a hard left off turn four, but couldn't get alongside to make the move. By the way, the uh, lead change numbers that we showed you there a minute ago, we're now up to 30 lead changes. Oh, look at this, four wide. Dale Jarrett right up through the center. The lap car of Nadu slides out from in the middle of that, and probably wisely so. Looks like Dale Earnhardt Jr. four wide on the outside. Mark Martin, Jerry Nadeau. Oh. Jarrett trying to push his way to the front. Robbie Gordon behind Jeff Gordon. Robbie cuts low. And puts Jeff in the middle and going backwards. And that's what, talking about that earlier, that's why you got to be looking in your mirror because if you let a guy Get underneath you on the left side. You get put where you don't want to be, right where Jeff Gordon is in the center lane. 32nd lead change, 12th leader of the day, Robbie Gordon, out in front in the singular car. Let's make our singular call to the pits. You think Jeff Gordon is calling for some help, Dave? Well, we'll find out because we'll talk to Robbie Loomis, his crew chief. He took on uh, right side tires twice, then left sides and made a little chassis adjustment. Now, I grew up in truck racing where you took on two tires at a time under caution. Under green here, you guys are pretty much forced to take on two at a time. Is it tough to adjust the car today? It really is tough. Unfortunately, you know, the guys have built a great car for us. We bought Chevrolet's hand on great, so we hadn't had to do a whole lot with it. And what about putting on that, uh, that chassis adjustment last time? What was that for? Well, it's going to be real tight. We're going to see. We fell back here a little bit. We're going to see the chase down here again. All right. They'll watch it through the entire run and see what they get. Marty? Well, Matt Borland is Ryan Newman's crew chief, Dave, and as the longer this race goes, it gets more intense. How's Ryan doing out there, and how's the car now? Uh, Ryan's doing great. Uh, we haven't heard a lot from him. He's got his hands pretty full, but uh, Alto Ford's running pretty good right now. The guys are like getting big stops, and uh, we'll see what happens here at the end of the race. He said he wanted to be more comfortable going in, meaning he was a little bit loose in? Yeah, he's pretty loose right now, but he's hanging on to it. So we're going to try and make it here so we can put a set of right sides on for this next stop. And remember, these guys finished 43rd here in the spring, looking much better today. Yeah, this is one place the driver doesn't do a whole lot of talking to either the spotter or the crew chief. Just listening. Just a lot of listening. Pack is starting to tighten up, and things are getting a little more intense here at Talladega. 65 laps to go. We're coming up on the 350-mile mark in the EA Sports 500. Robbie Gordon is out in front. He's rocking Talladega right now. It's for Jeff Gordon as we come back live to Talladega. He crossed the start finish line last time in 13th place, but he has slowed on the back stretch, and now he's coming to pit road under green. 
Another twist in the championship picture today. And I see no smoke coming out from the car, so looks like it could be a flat tire. Dave? As soon as I finished my interview with Robbie Loomis, he said, get off the cart, please. Jeff's talking to me now. Jeff started reporting that something was wrong under the hood. He asked him down the down pit lane what the problem was. He said it's just in big, big trouble. Smoke under the 24 hood now. Jeff Gordon has been great or not great for about the last month. He's got three wins in the last six races. But other races in that time, he had the engine problem at Richmond where he failed to finish. He had the crash at Dover where he failed to finish. And another title contender's in trouble today. And unfortunately, if they get the car fixed, he gets back out and is running perfectly. He can only pick up one spot. Jay Sauter's the only car that's the 71 car that's out of the race or yeah. 81 laps down. Yeah, he's out of the race. He bounced off the wall a little bit earlier and took the car to the garage with some damage. So what do the standings look like now? I don't see that 24 there. What a big gap for Tony Stewart. 157 points back to the fifth spot. And Jeff Gordon is going behind the wall. Looks like to the garage area. So Gordon behind the wall. Only the second car back there. And the other Gordon is the leader. Tony Stewart, though, runs second. Other championship contenders, Rusty Wallace is back in 17th place. Jimmy Johnson, 39th. Mark Martin, 31st. And Sterling Marlin is out for the season, as you know, from the headlines of the week with that neck injury suffered in the crash at Kansas. And you know, Benny, we talked about the pivotal race, and, and everybody used the phrase wild card and the unknown. What they're talking about was losing points in the big wreck, not these strange things that have happened today. Yeah. I mean, Mark Martin and Jimmy Johnson on the pace lap made contact and cost both of them a lap, had to make pit stop. Both of the cars lost a lap. Now Jeff Gordon has an engine problem, I guess, Dave. They do, BP. They just said, get the valve covers off. We'll see which cylinder it is. So they believe they've dropped a cylinder. Yeah. And yeah, the Mark Martin and Jimmy Johnson crashed, but at 55 miles, 65 miles per hour. Been a lot of talk in the garage about the championship that no one seems to be able to take control of. Nobody can get on that run and make the forceful statement to take command of this championship. It's going to come right down to Homestead in mid-November. And we'll follow it for you all the way on NBC and TNT. Right now, 59 laps to go at Talladega. Robbie Gordon's the leader. 56 laps to go. We are at 350 miles in the EA Sports 500 NASCAR on NBC from Talladega, Alabama. Been an unusual day in the championship as we check our Pepsi race recap. On the pace laps, the front row starters, Jimmy Johnson and Mark Martin, top two in the championship. Something locks up the steering on Mark's car. He comes across and bumps into Johnson. Mark pits on the pace lap. Johnson takes the green flag on the track, but then comes down the pit road on the first lap of the race with right front damage. Both drivers laps behind. They haven't caught up since. Jeff Gordon in traffic after leading earlier in the race for some 27 laps, slows. His car with engine problems is pushed behind the wall just moments ago. The championship standings with a big shuffle here today. Dave Burns is with Jeff Gordon now. And Jeff has stepped out of the car. He's taken a look underneath, talked to his guys. Jeff, what have you determined so far? Uh, lost a retainer uh, in, in one of the valve springs and uh, dropped a valve. So, and, and probably some more things went from there. That was probably the first thing to go. And I felt it lost, lose power there and dropped some RPM and didn't seem the same. And, you know, that thing was pretty, pretty strong, man. It was, I was having a lot of fun. I could go to the back, you know, and come right back to the front, man. I was just having a ball out there. My guys were just cranking out great stops. But uh, that's unfortunate, you know. That's that's our, been our misfortune all year long. We we can't seem to get you know back to back great finishes and wins and you know kind of carry the momentum. So uh, this is a big bummer today. Yeah, tough break for him, guys. He was one of the few cars that could had the DEI cars out there today. Jeff Gordon was fourth in the championship coming in, 109 points behind leader Jimmy Johnson. He's not going to take a big hit, a huge hit where Johnson and Martin are concerned, but that orange car. He could take a huge hit with him. 
Talking about the 20 car, Tony Stewart is currently running in second spot. There you see him, the Home Depot car. Can't seem to do anything with Robbie Gordon. Doesn't need to be in too much of a hurry right now while this thing is strung out single file. Best things to stay in line, right? Weren't yeah. you preaching that earlier? Uh, absolutely. They're doing what they should be doing, especially when it's getting close to these pit stops right now. Speaking of pit stops, Ricky Craven has been in. Mike Skinner, Brett Bodine, Elliott Sadler, Casey Atwood, all those cars lapsed down those last four. And uh, Bill Elliott, Jeremy Mayfield, and Kenny Wallace have also been in for pit stops. And remember the ticker across the top of the screen. The names will change to yellow as we cycle through the series of stops. And you saw Richard Childress, nine victories here at the Talladega Super Speedway. Robbie Gordon, the 31 car, drives for Richard Childress. Matt Kenseth gives up that third spot to come on the pit road. And guys, I don't think he can make it the rest of the way. 53 laps, 52 Bill? laps. I don't think so. I know he can't because I asked. Nope, they're very disappointed. Not getting good fuel mileage. Good car can run at the front, but they'll definitely need to stop again. Right side tires and fuel for Matt. Waiting on the fuel, waiting on the fuel. He goes away, we go to Matt. And both the 48 and 5, the Hendrick cars are in with another Hendrick corporate teammate in the 10 right behind. They're all going to have to stop one more time. Left side tires for the 48. Dave. Joe Nemechek not happy with the handling of his car. Four tire change for the 25 car. Nope. And he stalls in trying to leave. He refires. Is that the first four tire change we've seen all day? Yep, sure is. And Dave Blaney's out of gas again, second time today. In the yellow car. And about the same spot, it refired again. Robbie Gordon. One of 12 drivers who traded the lead 32 times today. We will easily break the record for most lead changes this season, which is 32. That was done back at Atlanta in March. We'll break it by the time we finish this cycle of green flag pit stops. Look at him fanning out everywhere. You see the 99 car, Jeff Burton back there. He had slowed about five or six laps going look like he had lost an engine, but someone told us that an ignition box had failed in his car. They have a backup system. He went to that, and now he's charging back to the front. Ninety-nine car showing in 12th place last time by. Racing with John Andretti there, and Rusty Wallace you're on board with. Picked this up off of Jeff Burton's team radio a little while ago when those problems occurred. Okay, we lost the box. And then it started smoking and smelled real funny. I switched back to box A and it shut off again. I went back to box B and it quit smoking. Hmm. He might have bigger problems than just an ignition box. But he's right there in the thick of the lead pack. And working with his brother Ward once again. You know, what an interesting dynamic that whole situation is with Jeff Burton splitting up with crew chief Frankie Stoddard. And any time you split up, there are some hard feelings. There's just no such thing as a completely friendly parting. And then Frankie ends up being the crew chief for Jeff's brother Ward. <laughs> you know? Is Junior, I mean, Junior all of a sudden can't keep up with these guys. I wonder what's going on there. By the way, Rusty in the pits, Bill. And he's getting right side tires and fuel. Kyle Petty did blister it right front with 65 laps on it. Right in front of Rusty, the 40 car of Jamie McMurray. Good stop for those guys. McMurray getting better at that as well, and he's on his way. Those guys lost a lot of time earlier in the race when the car ran out of fuel. A little Ford parade in that outside lane. Kurt Busch, Mark Martin, Ryan Newman trying to push back toward the front. Remember, Mark's not on the lead lap. He's the first car one lap down in 27th place. Ryan Newman, see the hose there on Newman's car. I think that's the hose that he drinks out of. Ken Schrader's just turned his car in yeah. behind the wall. I think that's the hose that he has down to a thermos bottle. If he needs a sip, he can place that hose in his mouth. And see those gauges right there? Yeah. You got one eye on that fuel pressure gauge right now. And that's that one that's, as that needle starts dipping, then you know it's not picking up the fuel and you're gonna be running out of fuel pretty quick. Caution free races at Talladega. May 1997, April 2001. No edition of this race 
the EA Sports 500 and its predecessors name-wise has ever been run without the yellow flag waving. And I'm knocking on wood as I say that right now. That looks like Kurt Busch is making a little headway trying to find his way to the front. Mark wasn't able to stay with him, though. No. Right up against him and push him. All right, Jeff Burton's coming in. We talked about his problems earlier, Bill. And it's a lonely feeling. He, uh, only one other car on pit road. That's all the way at pit in. Burton's getting right side tires. Gets a tear away off the windshield. Gets fuel and goes on his way. Had that wacky problem with the ignition box, but seems to have gone away at least for now. We'll keep an eye on it. Well, I see Dale Earnhardt Jr. has been able to get by Dale Jarrett. I wondered a moment ago why he'd fallen back, but I guess he was just resting a little bit. Now he's got that Bud car charging back toward the front. Maybe he was looking for somebody. Yeah, maybe he was. Like a blue car? Well, he was up two cars in front of him. Ah, oh, okay. You mean the blue car with the big yellow logo on the hood? Yep. That's the one. On board, Todd Bodine. Here comes Mikey. It's a battle for the fourth position. All right, the leaders will be starting to make some green flag pit stops shortly, so let's take a break so we can come back in time. Robbie Gordon and Kurt Busch fighting up front. Wrangler presents five-star finishes. One of my favorites at Talladega of all time, the 1981 Talladega 500. Ron Bouchard in the yellow car. Darrell Waltrip's leading. He's paying attention to Terry Labonte. Watch Bouchard through the tri-oval, sneak to the inside, and picked up his first NASCAR Winston Cup Series victory, the Fitchburg Flash from Fitchburg, Massachusetts. I saw Ron while we were up at the Loudon Race in July, looking very fit these days. Yep. For more on Wrangler five-star finishes, log on to NASCAR.com. Well, everything, everything's right in the world. Michael Waltrip and Dale Earnhardt Jr. back in front. Robbie Gordon, the 31 car, has made a pit stop. A little gas and oil, tires, not oil, gas and tires. Todd Bodine, John Andretti, and Mark Martin also came in during the break a minute ago. I thought Robbie went further on fuel last time. Check our Napa field summary. 34 lead changes among 12 different drivers today. Equaling the season high in lead changes so far. No cautions. And the two cars out of the race. Jay Sauter, who went out early. And Jeff Gordon, who just went out with an engine problem. I think I mentioned a minute ago, Ken Schrader went behind the wall. Valve spring. They've got the hood up on that car. Uh-oh. Mark was just in on pit road. And looks very, very slow. Now left rear, guys. Left rear. 3,900, Mark. 3,900. Well, question asked, question answered. And it goes bad. Yeah. Dave? Well, it looks like left side tires for Mark Martin. He must have had one going down. Off pit road now. Long day for Mark. Yeah, it got a lot longer. So how much longer can Michael Waltrip and Dale Earnhardt Jr. run? We're at 41 to go now. And they're probably about to make their last pit stop to this race if we don't see the caution flag. Well, let's, all right, let's see. We inter intercepted this on Michael Waltrip's radio. like the middle. Make a note. Did you hear that? Work to yeah. the middle. Well, I think these guys are going to stop about 150, and that means they got 38 laps to go. They've done that, so they can make it the rest okay, of the well, way. Tony's waving his hand, so you see the 20 car is going to be hitting pit lane here in a second. And who comes with him? Got to have people come with you so that the, you build back up the speed more quickly in the draft. If you stop by yourself, you're going to lose ground. Well, he might be in trouble. Kurt Busch, Kurt Busch going with him. Kurt Busch is the only guy coming yeah. in with him. And his teammate Bobby Labonte a little bit farther behind. 
40 laps to go. Here he comes, Matt. And this will be Tony Stewart's final scheduled pit stop. Chris Woodward, the engine tuner, told me they are plus one lap, meaning they can go to the finish and they will still have one lap still left in the tank, getting great fuel mileage. In keeping with the rotation, they will now take on left side tires. They can go the distance if Jeff Goosh Patterson gets every ounce of fuel in there. They packed it full and he is gone, Marty. It is right side tires for Kurt Busch, and this will not, unfortunately, be his last stop of the day as he speeds off pit road with Tony Stewart. They do have to stop one more time. They're about a lap short. But those two cars working together will get up to speed more quickly than if Stewart or Kurt Busch had just come in by themselves. Right, and I don't expect seeing 97 come in with one lap to go, though. All right, here we go, and Ryan Newman gets run out into the grass. As they start, all these cars, lead lap cars are on pit road. The DEI cars, Newman, Jeff Green, and Marty Snyder goes to work. Michael Waltrip comes in down pit road. The car is excellent for Michael. They'll make no changes to the chassis. Ryan Newman, his team told him we're one lap short. As he goes over the line, they have to push it back. That will hurt on the front end of pit road. Dale Earnhardt Jr., fuel and tires. They say the car is not as dominant. We're gonna have to beat him on pit road, and they do win that race off pit road. A long stop for Michael Waltrip Sponge. They're having to push the car backwards, and he stalled the car. Now they get it going. There goes Michael Waltrip, and they probably went the race. The car rolled off the jack. That yeah. was the problem. Didn't he have that problem a race or two ago, Bush, rolling off the jack? Bush Series race at Kansas okay. last week. Yeah. And I can't tell if the car was in gear and it rolled off. And the reason they had to push the car back, he couldn't just leave when they got the jack half minute. It was sitting on the air hose. You see the air hose is under the car, and you cannot run over the air hose as you leave. They've got to roll it back, get it off the hose. As Ryan Newman, although he had his problems, he's able to get away before Michael Walter. Michael's got his hand out the window. Man, he is by himself back there, isn't he? Yeah. Uh, what, they're checking to see if the window net is up on Michael's car. Might have knocked the window net down somewhere in the confusion also, and he may have to come back to pit road. Well, right. I, mean, I, I saw something on the back stretch. It looked like his hand out the window. It might have been holding, trying to hold the window net up. It's certainly in the car now. Marty? Well, I do see that the window net is up on Michael Waltrip's car, so I don't think that's what happened, where they may have just seen his hand coming out the window, but uh, obviously a big disappointment for this team. Uh, they're going to need some help if, indeed, they are going to be able to win this race. They had one of the best cars, but uh, the window net definitely up, so they will not have to bring him down pit road for a penalty. I like that window net's catching a lot of air, didn't it? Yeah. It looked a little bit different there. Yeah. wonder if he's holding it up. Hoping for a caution. Oh, well, it's hard. It's hard to latch those window nets when you're inside the race car. Dale Earnhardt Jr. leads 37 to go at Talladega. Next weekend, coverage of the chase for the NASCAR Winston Cup Championship moves to Charlotte. And our coverage begins on TNT Saturday with Winston Cup Happy Hour at noon Eastern time, followed by the NASCAR Busch Series race at 1 Eastern. And next Sunday, the UAW GM Quality 500. Lowe's Motor Speedway, Charlotte, NBC, next Sunday. Well, you know, we've seen a caution-free race. We've seen a lot of give and take. But you know what? We're getting down to where it's all going to be take. Yep. Not much given in the next 32 laps or so. Yeah, everybody's had enough with patience. Yep. Now it's going to see whatever you can get. And that's when the accidents generally tend to happen. The big, right. the big one, the big wreck, usually happens very late in the race when everybody's patience is just worn to a frazzle. BP? All right, let's check. first we'll check the no Noble Five drivers, the guys who have a chance to win the million dollars. If you're the fan paired with Dale Earnhardt Jr., Debbie Polson of Manchester, Connecticut, you might be feeling pretty good right now. Uh, remember you gave the Golden Benny to Randy Dorton and the Hendrick Engine Bunch? Yeah. I don't think they'll be celebrating tomorrow morning. Johnny Benson, Hendrick Engine, just went to the garage. Mm. Ken Schrader, we talked about the valve spring problem. He's out. Jeff Gordon is out. And now Joe Nemechek has just gone behind the wall. Engine problems. Dave. Man, oh, man. Dave, tell those guys I'm sorry. 
Well, uh, yeah, BB, believe me, next week when they see you, they'll be telling you uh, they, uh, they would like your condolences. But uh, Joe Nemechek, the latest retiree with the Hendrick power plant under his hood. Dale Earnhardt Jr. leads. Tony Stewart is second. Ricky Rudd has eased his way up into third spot. Kurt Busch is fourth. Rusty Wallace is fifth. Well, you know, I'm pretty sure that Dale Earnhardt Jr. can go the rest of the way. We heard a report that Tony Stewart can go the rest of the way. And, you know, I think maybe Ricky Rudd pitted at the same time as Jr., so looks like he might be good to go. Kurt Busch, can those guys make the rest? Matt, the, the, the 20 can make it, right? Yes, he can, Ben. And we're back to Dover. We aired a feature called Sizing Up the Competition, where drivers talked about drivers they're comfortable with and they have confidence racing and riding along with, especially in the draft. And that's what Tony Stewart has in Dale Earnhardt Jr. Usually at the plate tracks, they draft a lot together during practice and during the race. But Tony doesn't have a lot of confidence in the guys farther on back because he's told his spotter, Mark Robertson, to tell the 28, the 97, the 99, and the 6 to stay in line so we can protect the bottom so they don't try to make a run and shuffle us on back. Well, you don't have to worry about the 28 much. No, because he's he is about the smoothest guy out there, Ricky Rudd. But there's one thing about these racing deals. They're made to be broken. They have a way of falling apart. Dave, what you got? Now, speaking of falling apart, that's kind of what's happened to the 28 this year. This team disbanding after this year, Ricky Rudd going elsewhere. They have had great pit stops today. And after this last pit stop, of which they took on two right side tires, and had a, had a fast pit stop. Uh, he congratulated the crew on the radio. Everything very friendly between these guys right now because they know they can still win and they've had a great car all day long. Now the guy that may shake this up is that 97 car because I know he does not want to stay in line. He wants to get to the front. And here he goes. Look into the outside of Ricky Rudd for third. Rusty Wallace is pushing him there. Rusty Wallace has the DEI car Steve Park behind him. Kurt Busch has finished third in two of three career tries at Talladega. He runs this place very, very well. Jeff Burt drives to the inside, tries to take a spot away from Rusty Wallace. Well, right now, it's just seeing if that outside line can run well enough to get alongside Dale Earnhardt Jr. Tension growing as we close in on the finish. 27 laps to go in the EA Sports 500. Dale Earnhardt Jr. trying to win a third straight Talladega race. Can he do it again? No boundaries takes an unusual twist. You may remember that Dale Earnhardt is the winningest driver of all time here at Talladega with 10 victories, but what you may not remember is victory number one. Back then, the man in black was, well, the man in blue and yellow in the 15 car, driving, you guessed it, a Ford to victory lane here at Talladega with legendary car owner Bud Moore. He won three races with Bud Moore, the last of which came right here at Talladega. Right now at Talladega, Chevrolet is leading the field, but behind him looming the Ford of Kurt Busch. Alan? And don't forget about Ricky Rudd in the 28 car. Yep. And let's mention Todd Bodine there, pictured second in line behind Dale Earnhardt Jr. He is now the first car one lap down. Todd dipped below that yellow line on the back straightaway a little while ago, had to make a stop and go penalty on pit road. The out of bounds rule. It's getting tense. Yes. 23 laps to go, now 22 here at Talladega. Coming up on the final 50 miles of the EA Sports 500. Lead lap, 23 cars, 20 of them in this lead draft, along with some lap machines. Some of them are going to have to stop for fuel between here and the finish if we don't get a caution. And the closer we get to the finish and the more intense the racing for position gets, the higher the likelihood the big one may yet still happen. Caution free so far today, 35 lead changes among 12 drivers. And some of these cars might run out of fuel trying to make that extra lap or two. Just on pit road, Bill Elliott, Jimmy Spencer, Jeremy Mayfield, and Brett Bodine. And Terry Labonte has just taken his car to the garage. That is a Hendrick Motorsports car. Matt, do I hear Jimmy Johnson's also struggling? Alan, the hits keep right on coming for rookie Jimmy Johnson. Remember, he had that 
opening action at the beginning of the race. Now he reports to news crew chief Chad Canals. I'm down on seven cylinders, and it's getting worse. A bad day for the Hendrick engine department. Man, oh man. Last week was so great at Kansas Speedway for all those guys at Hendrick and the engine department. Today has been so far a disaster. And Jimmy Johnson's team has been warned they're not meeting the minimum speed right now, so they've only got another lap or so to try and pick that up, and he'll be sent to the garage. NASCAR Winston Cup Championship standings going to take a shuffle today. Tony Stewart running second. Could come out of here with the lead, but we've still got a long way to go. Look at Rusty Wallace on the outside. Around the lap car of Todd Bodine and try to pass Tony Stewart for second. All right, last commercial break before the checkered flag if the race stays green. Let's take it now, come back for the dramatic finish. 20 laps to go from Talladega. NASCAR on NBC from Talladega Super Speedway in Alabama. It's the EA Sports 500 down to its final 17 laps. Championship pictures taking a tumble today with drivers having problems, starting with the top two in the championship on the pace laps, Jimmy Johnson and Mark Martin. Now, Dale Earnhardt Jr. trying to win a third straight Talladega race, leading Tony Stewart and Ricky Rudd, and some people needing to stop for fuel once more before the checkers. Don't believe the front two do. Earnhardt Jr. and Stewart both say they're good to go to the finish, but some of the guys behind them, eh. It's going to be a little bit iffy. And some guys that think they can make it might run out of fuel. And like you just said, VP, there's going to be some guys that are going to if they're a lap short, they're going to stay out. Oh, yeah, they've got to. And they're going to be right in the middle of this when they run out, if they run out, which is going to be pretty tense. Dale Earnhardt Jr. trying to become only the second man ever to win three straight Talladega races. The other, Buddy Baker. 1975, he swept the season, and he won the opening 76 race at Talladega also. Nobody else has won three straight here, even his father, who won ten times at Talladega. Won a couple in a row on a couple of occasions here, but never won three straight. See John Andretti back there. He's in seventh position in the Cheerios Dodge hanging in there. I'll tell you, he's done a great job hanging with the group all day. At the very end of that lead pack, you're going to see a white car right there on the high lane, the 49, Stacy Compton. This is the BAM racing team that's been trying to get a foothold in NASCAR Winston Cup racing. Stacy jumping in the car this weekend. 16 lead lap cars in that pack, and he's among them. Yep, he's in the lead draft. 14th right now, Yep, that last time by. And that's, that's a great job for a team that's, like I said, just trying to get a foothold and, and establish themselves in this sport. Total of 23 cars on the lead lap. Remember Michael Waltrip, the pit road problem, last pit stop, dropped him back. He's in 16th place. Scott Winner back in 17th, Matt Kenseth and Ricky Craven, Bill Elliott, Jimmy Spencer, Jeremy Mayfield, they've already made their pit stops. And it's dropped them a little bit farther behind. And then you've got Bobby Labonte last on the lead lap in 23rd place. His car stalled on his last pit stop. He's 40 seconds off the lead. Here's right. Rusty, Bill. And this is just a splash. 55 races since Rusty Wallace has gone to victory lane. Looks like it's going to be 56. Good car, just didn't get the fuel mileage they wanted. Snyder. And the same story for Robbie Gordon. Good car, just didn't get the fuel mileage he needed. Kevin Hamlin on the radio counts one, two, three. That's all the fuel they needed. Three seconds might have cost them the race because they led for a lot today and had a great car. How many more of this lead pack are going to have to stop for fuel? You know, the strange thing is Ryan Newman, Rusty Wallace's teammate, has run more laps than Rusty. You'd think that they would be about exactly the same thing. They both have the same engines, the Jasper Pisky engines, and but here he's still on the racetrack. And uh, Benny, that's exactly why the guys in the two pit have been scratching their head. Very disappointed, happy for Ryan getting that mileage, but cannot figure out why they aren't getting it. These guys are gonna have to gang up on the eight car if they're gonna do it, BP, even if they can gang up on the eight car to try to get by him. Speaking of Ryan Newman, Marty? 
Well, talking about the fuel mileage situation for Ryan about midway through this race, his crew chief Matt Borland said start conserving now, and that may be one reason that has led to them staying out a little bit longer, but not this many laps. They are clearly getting better fuel mileage than the two car is, but they think they're going to try to make it all the way. That's one of the reasons he's dropped back just a little bit right now, saving as much fuel as he can. He's been doing it for almost half the race. Dave has got Ricky Rudge pit. I'd like to get him to check into this too and tell us whether that 28 car is going to stop between now and the finish or not and find out if he's going to be in the mix of things. Let's see that Jimmy Johnson, the 48 car, the Lowe's car, down low on the racetrack on those seven cylinders. Uh, those cars go by. All right, Dave, what about Ricky Rudd? I would be happy to update you on that. He can go the rest of the way. When Before he pitted, they were discussing fuel, and Michael McSwain, his crew chief, told Ricky, you can go the same amount of laps we went last time without a problem. He stayed out with the DEI cars, came in with them, and can go to the end with them. Okay. okay. So that must mean that Jarrett can as well. But he might have, I think Jarrett pitted a lap or two before those guys. Yeah, I'm just kind of looking through this league group here, the guys that are going to run to the finish on fuel to see what kind of teammates or, or manufacturer partners or anything might be up there. This is pretty wide open right now. You got the Burton brothers running there in fourth and fifth, but you got Earnhardt Jr. in a Chevy leading, Tony Stewart in a Pontiac second, Ricky Rudd in a Ford third, then the Burton brothers fourth and fifth, then a Roush car, Kurt Busch in sixth. He could help his teammate Jeff in theory. And then John Andretti in a Dodge in seventh. So, you know, we don't have the, the DEI pairing up there or any of that kind of thing. This could be well, that's why I, I think you got some spotters up there and drivers. Everybody's starting to at least make an effort to wheel and deal, Benny, yeah. on how they're going to get by that eight car if they can. I mean, Tony Stewart probably asking the 28 guys if they'll go with me if I pull out. All right, here come some cars on the pit road. Speaking of the Burton brothers. Jeff and Ward coming in. Oh, oh what was that? man, oh man. Todd Bodine, the 26 car, went completely below that yellow line and looked like he was on a dirt track there for a minute. Oh, baby. Glove saving a beauty. Glove saving a beauty. <laughs> Remember, Todd had a uh, penalty for going below the yellow line on the back stretch earlier so that's dropped him a lap down in 24th place well he was definitely below the yellow line he may have been forced down there i don't know that he was trying to pass someone but he was below the yellow line sideways check it out todd bodine just a lap ago there he seems trying to get oh, he got oh, turned oh, he yeah. got turned didn't he uh, jeff, jeff green. green but look jeff was down there already and todd started coming down and jeff was not going to lift Listen to this and watch. Well, that was a great save. Man, that was unbelievable. Mile an hour. Oh, you <laughs> yeah, you are yeah, doing. Come on, keep digging. Keep digging. You're doing real good, Richard Bostic says. The spotter for Todd Bodine. Yeah, that's our autotrader.com move of the race. It's got to be. Absolutely. Love saving a beauty, and he ties it up for the faceoff. Todd Bodine, autotrader.com move of the race. Our championship leader starting the day is going behind the wall. Benny, if these guys are going to do something, they got They can't wait till the last couple of laps. We always see that, but I think yeah. they got to start doing it now if they can. Yeah, I don't know if they can. Uh, the, you know, the, the thing is, the more cars that were in that lead pack, the more opportunities there would be to pass Junior. But the more these people stop for fuel and the more get cut out of the herd, right? the tougher it's going to be. The better he looks. 11 races at Talladega, settled by a last lap pass. But number 12 B today. They've been coming down here since 1969, so it's not 12 races. Quite a few of them. Championship standings as we close in on the finish with Tony Stewart running second. Mark Martin running 30th. Ryan Newman's in seventh. And Rusty Wallace, just off pit road, is in 15th. How about that? Ryan Newman up to fourth. We talked about Jimmy Johnson being a bestest rookie trying to win a championship. Hey, let's don't count Newman out yet. Maybe another million dollar day for Dale Earnhardt Jr. Eight laps away from the checkered flag about to be seven at Talladega. And John Andretti has had to make a pit stop, get a splash of fuel. I notice Junior's running that low line now, BP. He's yeah. not going to let anybody get underneath him if he can help it. He's in protection mode. He's in protection mode. He goes down the back straightaway on the 
left side of the racetrack. Now we see Tony back up there down in one and two. He was backing up to see if he could get a run on Junior down the straightaway. If you stay right up next to the bumper, you'll never get a run. You've got to drop back a little bit, and then as you come off the straightaway, try to get that run. But do you think if they all pulled out on Junior, they could have got by? If, uh, you know, right now you got one, two, three, four, seven cars if they all pulled up to the right. But it doesn't look like it. I mean, the eight car looks awfully strong. You want seven guys to work together and do the same thing? Is that what you just said? What am I thinking? <laughs> well, what am I thinking, thinking? Wally? Gee whiz. You know, even if Tony Stewart finishes second today, he'll have to consider that a victory of sort because in this season, the restrictor plate races have been his Achilles heel. Of the six races Tony Stewart has failed to finish this season, three of them have been the three previous restrictor plate races. I he, believe I said that the starting line of his average finish is like 37th on the restrictor plate races this yeah, year. Yeah, he, he had the engine failure early in the Daytona 500, and then he crashed at Talladega here in April and at Daytona in July. Yeah, he's not a big fan of these deals. No. I was down there the other day, him and I and Hutt were talking, Hutt Strickland were talking, he said, you know, this is the one place, if I could just take the green, come in and let you guys drive the race, <laughs> I would do it. Just this one place. Ranks of potential winners thinned out by this long green flag run. Caution free, in fact, throughout the race. And we're down to now five laps to go. You know, we talked about this being a big race as far as the points is concerned. And we all thought we think about the crash. And that was obviously what we were talking about. But you know, this place is hard on engines, as the folks at Hendrick found out today. Because to try to make horsepower with that small restrictor plate, they do all kinds of trick things. Well, today, those tricks that Randy and those guys tried backfired on them. The tricks were no treat? No, they, they, yeah. The Halloween coming up there. It was definitely no treat. Well, we got rid of that big 40-car pack, that's for sure. Anyway, I don't know what the fuel cell deal. You know, Kurt Busch looked like he had such a great car earlier, but he hasn't shown the ability. Back where he is in line, he's got to make something happen now. He's got to start going. You talked about you can't wait till the last lap, but right. if you're where he is in line in fourth, you I'm can't just, wait till three laps to go. You got to go. Yeah. Jimmy Johnson is out, Dave. He is behind the wall. He's just climbed out of the car. You heard about the other cars going away. Did you try to adjust your driving style or anything to save your motor, Jimmy? I'd be totally honest with you. I didn't have a clue. Um, we really don't talk about it on the radio. We're afraid we'll jinx ourselves. Uh, when I broke, I looked up and I saw the five on the apron, too. So um, it's one of those deals. Don't want it wrong, but you know the guys try awfully hard in the engine shop. We had great power, really competitive all day long. Uh, our day was crazy from the get-go. I don't know what the heck happened with Martin at the beginning. Knocked the right front fender in on the tire, and uh, it's been a wild day. But hey, what the heck? Whoever's been leading this points has had nothing but problems. So I'm glad we don't have to worry about that voodoo doll on our backs. And we'll just go on and see what happens. All right, he was the points leader coming in, guys. Jimmy Johnson out. Joining his Hendrick teammates, Jeff Gordon, Terry Labonte, and Joe Nemechek, plus the Hendrick supplied cars of Johnny Benson and Ken Schrader. You saw Ryan Newman in the 12 car, the Altel car, try to make a pass just a moment ago uh, on Steve Park, and all it did was cost him a spot. Jeff Green gets by, and now he's brought Dale Jarrett, some other cars into the mix. Now, Jarrett stopped two laps before. Dale Earnhardt Jr. and Ricky Rudd. So they're holding their breath. They're holding his breath, aren't they, Marty? Are indeed, BP uh, Del Jarrett's team is, and they're going to come down pit road this time. He just radioed the top there. Are we going to try and stretch the fuel? He said, no, let's not do it. Let's come down. Let's get a splash of fuel. We cannot make it. So they are indeed short. Here comes Del Jarrett down pit road now. And here comes Dale Earnhardt Jr. across the stripe. Two laps to go. Next time the white flag flies. If Tony Stewart's got something for him, he better start showing it. I think he's been trying to show it for yeah, about 10 laps, but that's it. What you see is what you get. Jeff Green trying to make something happen. Outside of Steve Park and takes the fifth spot. Farthest forward of the Richard Childress cars. Yeah, I think a little bit, a couple of laps going. Tony backed up down in one and two and tried to get that run. I think that's when he was trying to see what he had. And I guess he assumed not much or not enough. Yeah. Dale Earnhardt Jr. will have led 55 laps today at the start-finish line. 143,000 on their feet at Talladega as the white flag flies. Final lap of the EA Sports 500. 
Spotter says keep it on the bottom. Junior will be more than happy to comply. Behind him, Steve Park being challenged by Ryan Newman for a spot. But the front five, single file. Kurt Busch looking for third, can't do it. Ricky Rudd with a brief peek. Kurt Busch trying to find enough muster to run with him. His father won here 10 times. And now Dale Earnhardt Jr. is going to become only the second man in this track's history to score three straight wins at Talladega Super Speedway. Earnhardt Jr. to the checkered flag. He wins the EA Sports 500. Two victories this season for Dale Earnhardt Jr., Talladega, and Talladega. And a new millionaire has joined the ranks of the American wealthy, Debbie Polson of Manchester, Connecticut. Has won the million dollars as the fan, and Dale Earnhardt Jr. has picked up the million dollar bonus. <laughs> Dale Jr., great job. Don't forget they need his extra lap out of you behind that Winston Doble uh, money truck. And the parade begins. Earnhardt Jr. led 56 of the 188 laps to pick up the victory. His seventh career win for Earnhardt Jr. and the Bud team. Marty? And Tony Uri Sr. gets a high five from Slugger Lab. He's still talking to Dale Earnhardt Jr. on the radio. The last driver to complete the season sweep at Talladega. Dale Earnhardt Sr. did that in 1999 here in 2002. Dale Earnhardt Jr. does the same thing. You said you had to beat him on fuel strategy and pit strategy today, and you did it. Yeah, we, uh, we didn't know what this new fuel cell deal was going to bring us and uh, sat down in the truck this morning and figured out what we did yesterday. We knew uh, it was going to be tight. If we could just get that first first run in there, we could make it. And uh, we're just, you know, just hoping that three pace left didn't mess us up. But we knew it was going to be close. Should run out probably behind this truck right here because it's definitely out of gas. But uh, Richie Gilmore, all them guys in the shot, we had them worried yesterday. Uh, we called them up and we uh, considered changing the engine in this car because we was getting beat in practice yesterday. But I guess we need to apologize to them because every car that was beating us in practice yesterday sitting over in that garage. So, uh, hey, DEI guys, you ain't let us down yet. I think it was a good decision, guys, so keep that engine in. And we talked about that early in the race. They go on to win the day at Talladega. <laughs> and some of that fake money being spread in front of Dale Earnhardt Jr. The seventh straight win for Chevrolet at Talladega. Dale Earnhardt Jr., your winner today, and Chevy congratulates Dale and the number eight Monte Carlo. Dale Jr. will tell you the only thing that comes close to Monte Carlo's reputation on the track is its reputation on the street. More champions depend on Chevy. We'll be there. All right, they're going to sprinkle a little money around the racetrack. And then Earnhardt Jr. is probably going to get sprinkled with a little beer in victory lane. And we'll come back for the celebration in a moment. Earnhardt Jr., the winner, Tony Stewart, the new championship leader. Post-race coverage in a moment on NBC. New leader in the NASCAR Winston Cup Championship with six races to go. Tony Stewart is out in front. Tony has won at four of the six remaining tracks on the season after today. In the middle of this pack of people, Matt Yoakum's with Tony Stewart. And Tony Stewart, you said today would be one of the biggest hurdles in that bid for a Winston Cup championship. Congratulations. For the first time in your career, you are the new point leader. Well, this is for Bob Nardelli and all the people at Home Depot and, uh, you know, their 280,000 associates right now. I mean, he's, these people stuck with us through thick and thin, and, uh, you know, it's just a great day. I mean, we had an awesome day today, and, you know, the biggest thing was just finishing, you know, and not getting any trouble, and we did that, and, uh, you know. Now we get now we get to go back real racing again. <laughs> Did you try to make a run at him? Not at all. I told him I told my spotter to go down there and tell his spotter that I wasn't leaving him. I mean it was it wasn't Top Gun, but I wasn't leaving my wingman. You know, I'll, he he'd help get us there, and and we've always run good together. I mean it's something about that Budweiser Chevy and the Home Depot Pontiac. You get those two cars together on a super speedway, and if we don't have problems, we can help him out a lot. They always run well together. Tony Stewart second at Talladega for the third time in his career. Bill. 
And Dale Earnhardt Jr. is in victory lane, about to climb out of his Budweiser Chevy and celebrate as a million dollar winner here at Talladega, his third straight win at this track. And this is a celebration that's gonna go on for a while. High fives all around, money in the air. The new million dollar woman. Well, you were talking in the garage yesterday and you said you like this place. And I imagine you do. Yeah, we had some good times here, I'll tell you that. <laughs> uh, I'm wore out. <laughs> but uh, we had a good car. I really surprised, but not surprised at the same time Tony stuck with me. He tried real hard last time to beat me here. And uh, I guess it's a little harder to pass the leader than it was then, so. Hey, good car, good car. An outstanding Thanks. fuel mileage. Yeah, well, we weren't the only ones. Some of them guys had good fuel mileage, too. And uh, the thing about it was, <coughs> as the pack kind of thinned down, only four or five cars in line, it's hard to push a guy by the leader. I knew that was going to be my advantage to winning. But uh, this car won because of guys like Tony Jr., Richie Gilmore, uh, Tony Sr., everybody. We heard you screaming when you took the lead. Yeah, I was having a good time. The car was, it wouldn't do everything I wanted it to, but just about everything I asked it to do. So I can't complain. I mean, I had a good, good enough car. And uh, shoot, man. I mean, it just, I'm just holding the wheel. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. It's what happens when you get a beer dumped on your equipment in Victory Lane, I think. Bill's microphone started sounding a little noisy. We apologize for that. Here are the results from today's EA Sports 500. Dale Earnhardt Jr. Victory today, his second straight, excuse me, his third straight at Talladega. He swept the season here this year. Big story of the day, those who failed to finish and those who had problems. All those cars that you see there still on the lead lap. Jeremy Mayfield back in 20 spots. Scott Wimmer, the 23 car. Didn't talk about him a lot today, but 17th place and 22 cars on the lead lap. There it is, 30th place. Mark Martin went south for him on the pace lap. When the steering locked up, he slid across into fellow front row starter Jimmy Johnson, and they were behind from the drop of the green flag. A lot of guys failed to finish. Johnson, one of them. A lot of lead changes today. Most importantly, lower right, zero caution flags.